Hello, and welcome to the Morphomania Podcast. We are back with another episode. I am Humanoid, along with... The Doif. And... It's me, Mighty Morphin Peter Sellers. God damn it. And we have a special guest today from the Andre and Melball Talk Wrestling Podcast, and he is... Andre C. Known as that Canada guy. That's right. Welcome. Yeah, he's not going to show up all the time. He's just here because we had to, like, drag him in here. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome was, to the was, world was, of yesterday. <laughs> the world the of tomorrow. Episode, but yeah, the last episode, but you know, didn't watch the with you. <laughs> yeah. So today we're yeah, doing. It, Sorry, go ahead. It, it's a shame because he missed Green with Evil. <laughs> yeah, it was a great series. Yeah. Was... Then I watched what we watched. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so today we're going through episode twenty-one to twenty-six. Uh, uh, so 20, 22, 22 through 26, 22 to 26, right? 22. Right, oh man, oh, oh man. man, oh yeah, 22. Goldberg. Goldberg, Goldberg eats corn the long way. No, nothing, okay. Uh, that failed, okay. Oh, so, so the, bad, yes, I'm all go to the corner, I'm quietly laughing to myself. I don't know what you fucks are talking <laughs> yeah, about. I, I'm laughing to myself silently, too. I just needed the moment to let that through, <laughs> anyway. First, the fr- uh, episode twenty-two, the trouble with shell shock. Oh I God. actually, but before we begin, I feel like since it's his first time on the podcast, he should uh, Andre should give his uh his uh initial experience of Power Rangers. Oh yeah, we gotta get that out of him. Yeah, how are you a Power Ranger fan, sir? Oh, from from the day it came out, I was I was a little kid. Uh, I was obsessed with Turtles and Ghostbusters, and then. Just watching TV, I found the Power Rangers, and I've I've watched every season. There's there you know there's fall off my least favorite season in uh, Mystic Force. That yeah, shit Mystic hole. Force is an awful. And Operation Overdrive, <laughs> another shit whole season. Hey, Operation <laughs> Overdrive wasn't okay. that bad. I gotta and, say. and Mega Force is my other least favorite season. Oh, of course, so. Mega Force. Yeah, no. Oh yeah, Mega Force is yeah no. Fuck off. Wait, wait, <laughs> no Mega Force or Super Mega no, Force? No, Super Mega Force, but Super Mega Force can go die in a fire. Oh. The entire season, both both seasons, it, they both suck. Yeah, just they're, they're probably the worst season. Mystic Force right ahead, just just ahead of them. In the worst season, make the Mystic Force. It's not like, that bad. It was Mega- terrible. I only like Korag. I don't like anything from that season. Korag it's made so it watchable because he was a and badass. The, and, the best, and the best thing they did with Operation Overdrive is only bring one of the Mystic Force Rangers. Yeah, it's fucking Xander. God damn it. Why? Hey, what's up? The name's Xander. You got it. Check me out. <laughs> oh, not Xander. I, I, will, I will say, out of all the Rangers that could have brought back from Mystic Force, they did pick one of my least favorites, too. Like, so that is fair. <laughs> Which one was I that? I can't wait till we actually get to like Mystic Force and I encounter Xander in the wild for the first time. Oh, you're gonna encounter it because like, hi, I'm Xander. Shut the fuck <laughs> up, Xander. So I love Ziggler. <laughs> yeah. Well, what I absolutely, tolerable. guys. Ziggler is far more tolerable. What yeah. I absolutely love about uh, Xander is that he is the first. Uh, because they filmed for years in New Zealand. He's the first New Zealand-born Power Ranger, and nobody likes him. <laughs> <laughs> fucking hilarious. Technically, they're all New Zealand people, but they just changed their accents to American. Xander is actually New Zealand, but he kept the accent. Thanks for representation, Power Rangers. <laughs> yeah. Like the We're Disney inclusive. Era. Yes. Okay. Anyway, so, what do we um... learn today? Xander sucks. <laughs> I I'm and and Mystic Force doesn't suck. Anyway, the yes, trouble with Shell Shock. Uh air date October eleventh, nineteen ninety three. Um and it was written by Stuart St. John, uh Julianne Clem, and directed by David Blythe. David I, Blythe wasn't he the guy that directed all of Green with Evil or was that someone else? There was a bunch of different people that directed that. But he yeah, was one it, was, of them. Um, it was written by a bunch of people, but it was all directed by one guy. Oh, if I remember right, correctly. right. Robert Hughes. I'm trying. Robert Hughes, thank you. That's it. Okay, okay so it's, it's not the same guy. So uh, the sh- uh, the Trouble Shell Shock, uh, Season 1, Episode 22, opens up with the gang once a bloody again playing sports outside. 
Well, that's what you do in the 90s. What degenerates playing sports outside in the summer? Yeah, man. You never played sports outside? I no. My big thing is, are all of them like straight A students? Yeah, they made an episode no, no, about no, no, that. They, they oh, just, just make Billy do all of their homework. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. You know, you know what? That actually explains. Uh, that actually answers my question because my question was going to be, how can they have all these after school activities and stuff and still have like straight A's? But you know what? You, you again, you just answer my question. Billy does all their homework. Yeah, like he doesn't have no choice. Like, damn it, I want to be and part of the team. And apparently, Tommy does all their yard work with the fucking Mexican poncho he's rocking in this opening scene. Oh, get used to that Mexican poncho. Oh, he he rocks that poncho a lot. Yeah, he's a I, great I think poncho. This, I, I I think this and Jedi Fallen Order made me fall in love with the idea of buying ponchos and rocking them. I have a poncho. <laughs> yeah, a, pro, a poncho from Mexico too. Oh, nice. Ooh. So it's so, like so it's whenever... like extra awesome. Yeah, it's like whenever I think of ponchos, I'm gonna forever think about this scene. Uh, th- sorry, Mal- Malcolm, what did you just bring up? My brain, my brain melted for a second. Uh, it, it was uh, J- J- Jedi Survivor, and um, yeah, it was this. this. It's this Jedi Survivor and Metal Gear Rising Revengeance. <laughs> Wait, he rocks a poncho in that? Yeah, there's a scene where Raiden is just in a mariachi outfit with a poncho. Adios, amigos. What the hell? I hate, I hate Raiden. Raiden, he's so terrible. Oh, he's such a fuck boy. <laughs> he, he ruined Metal Gear Solid too. Oh, you so you're, you're those, part of that Those camp. naked cartwheels were awesome. Wish I knew what you're talking about, but anyway, back to the shell shock. Back thing. to trouble with shell shock. Yeah, there is actually. I will say there is an entire segment of that game where you play as riding naked. God damn! Yeah, that's the fun bit with the with the upside down cartwheels while he's holding his junk. So anyway, after we get uh, Zach talk and smack talk, we get a uh, uh, a shot of squat. Um, yeah, squad, right? Yeah, squad, yeah, squad. The blue one. Yeah, God, I always mix He's those two blue. up. The short blue one. After we get a shot of squat, uh, the, the, then we uh, cut to Bandora Castle, and uh, with uh, Rita fast a bloody sleep on a rocking chair, mm-hmm. as is his tradition. Yep. I wonder if her snoring no- noises were also dubbed by uh, Magico. Barbara Goodson. Barbara Goodson. Yeah, probably. No, she does they, all the they probably were, because yeah. it definitely didn't sound like Japanese snoring. Yeah, no, it's it's always Bobber Goodson hey, doing the voice. I, of I, How do you know I, what I, Japanese I, snoring yeah, sounds like? I was about like. to ask the same question. Yeah, what Japanese wait, what? Snoring sound like? Yeah, like, I watched I watched Tokusatsu. I I know I, there's a lot of sleeping potion plots in Sentai uh, Kamen Rider. I don't know what you're talking about. Okay, but, but how does it differ? That's my question. Abort this joke. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, abort the joke. Abort the joke. I'm gonna abort this joke before people think I'm racist. <laughs> Not what I was going for, but okay. So we get um, it's this bloody monster of the fucking week. Okay, so Babu and Squat are sneaking down to the uh, the monster matic. Uh, because they're going to create a monster without Rita's supervision, like the children that they are. Finally doing something on their own, because they're actually doing something. And they decide to make Shell Shock. <laughs> it's like Razor from the Turtles 2 movie. It's Toka, not Razor. I mean Toka. I always get them confused. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Toka that that is the turtle, snapping turtle. Razor is the wolf. The wolf. Yes. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, uh, with really weird ass designs in the 2012 show. If you ever want to check it out, they turned Toka into Gamera, basically. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and they originally make Razor look absolutely stupid. 
Like okay. he, 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 he looks like a golden retriever or a husky, like a, a, a light furred husky that just ate like two bees. <laughs> so you're telling me he looks like Wags the dog from the Wiggles. Except <laughs> worst. Good. Uh, <laughs> what the heck? Back, is the back to the episode real quick. I'm surprised we... you know the Wiggles. <laughs> What is the Wiggles? Yeah, that's what I'm wondering. You don't want to know. You don't want to know. It's something deep in the recesses of my mind from when I was like a, a toddler. I yeah, don't want to talk it's a about kid's it. Thing. It's a kid's thing. Yeah, you don't want to talk about it. It's ba- Okay, you know what? Quick sidebar. No, it's no, we're not talking off- about the Wiggles. Dude, dude, dude. It's, it's dude, an, Aust- dude, it's an, we it's made an a Australian pact. boy band. We, we made a pact. I want to know about this pact, but going on, continue on with the squad. Is that an Australian yeah. boy band? Yeah, yeah they're, they're basically an Australian, Australian toddler boy band. Jesus Christ. Anyway, uh, my favorite part about Shell Shock uh, is that Babu doesn't th- doesn't originally think of Shell Shock as a name. Squat names him, and uh, Babu was originally going to name this monster either either Greta or P Touche. P Touche. Fucking P Touche. Yeah. And he had I kind of wanted to hear. Uh, Watch out! It's the terrifying and destructive turtle Petush. <laughs> he has a bat. I'm more afraid of him. His name is Petush because it's like if, if he's if he has that effed up of a name, you know he's screwed up on the inside. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I think shock. what kills me even more is just Greta. Greta. <laughs> <laughs> Rangers, your most foul nemesis yet, Greta. Greta the turtle. <laughs> Rangers, Rita has sent Greta to destroy the abandoned warehouse district. You mean the librarian other... Zordon? No, Greta my, the turtle. My oh my god. Is... And Greta summoned his brother, Eunice. <laughs> Not Eunice. <laughs> uh, my question is, how does Zordon know all these names? That's my other question. He's an all-knowing being. He's in a portal. They, he yeah, a, he's they Zordon, just, man. They just named him. They just created him and named him. How does he know the name? It's like not questioning why God. Batman knows things. Yeah. You just it's don't like do asking it. why Jigsaw knows that things are going to happen. He's an omniscient god. Yeah. So, so, so Zordon is the world's greatest detective then? Yes. He's yes. stuck in a two-ball day. What else is he going to do? Zordon is Batman confirmed. Oh my god, wait, wait. Batman's canon to Power Rangers, remember? Oh my god. Yeah, that Gotham and Batman are canon in Power Rangers, so uh, it, it is true. true. Yeah. Zordon is Batman. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Okay, so they get out the shell shock. Baton. Yes. And Lord so Dead is about- Joker. I can yeah. see that. I definitely can see talk that. To, talk, talk to us about Shell Shock more, Malcolm. What 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 is what is unique about him? Uh, okay, yeah. The whole reason I have a bloody migraine while watching this episode, and because I was regretting a few episodes of watching this show, this is one of them. Because this is just stupid. <laughs> he has a bat and a traffic light on his head. No, no he just. It's just Traffic light. He has a traffic light sticking out of his shell. It's, it's well, this is slow, like Malcolm. this is like I, I I mentioned this during when we were watching it. This is like that Pokemon that's just a lamp. There's a few of them that are just a lamp. <laughs> yeah, but that's not even a, a single Pokemon. You have to be more specific. Pokemon, why do you stupid so much? <laughs> All I can think of when thinking about Shell Shock with his light on his back is uh, the old Snoop Dogg and Limp Bizkit song, Red Light, Green Light. Hurry, the Go Beam! Light, Green Light. Red Light, Green Light. Red Light, Red light Green Light. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, nice. What a callback. Uh, and let's not forget about the giant cannon that he has in in the back of his head, basically. Yeah, inside. Like, he, sl- he slips his head into the shell, and then it comes out, and it's just a cannon. <laughs> yep. It, it, like it's a almost like a, a little bit of Blastoise was snuck in there. This is before hey. Blastoise. Remember, this is all before Blastoise, too. This does predate Blastoise Pokemon. Was, it, Blastoise it, it, it was a ripoff of Shell Shock. Blastoise was snuck. Okay, so this is more just stupid Gamera, then. So what you're saying is uh, Haim, is, is uh, Nintendo own ha- oh, Haim Saban money? Yeah, <laughs> probably. Yep. <laughs> Yep. I'd say Toho owes Haim Saban money. 
no, 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 wait, no, you had to read the first time. Yeah. So, so yeah. then after they create this weird ass abomination of a monster, which I'm I'm pretty sure um this is part of the z2 footage no, if, it's not um, the if Z2 you guys footage remember yet. when i brought this up uh z2 footage showed up after doomsday part two that's when they started using z2 footage are you sure because yeah, I, yeah. I remember of uh, the turkey was pal rangers exclusive yeah no it, uh the z2 footage started after doomsday part two because that's when they were supposed to end the show on doomsday but they got Told a hey, let's do make more episodes, and they contacted Japan Taui saying like, hey, can you make special uh, episodes for us just so we can have them and not air on your thing? And they go like, yeah, as long as you pay us. So after Doomsday Two is when they started do two footage. Right now we're on yeah. two. This is like and this is like after almost the end of season one because I'm pretty sure Doomsday is like in the last ten episodes. Yeah, because like right now they're on do one footage, and then when Doomsday Part Two happens, after that it's do two footage. So all of this is, uh, is part okay, of, okay, all of this part now is part of Do Ranger. It threw me yeah. off because the turkey was Power Rangers exclusive, so I thought maybe it's like they they shot it all at once and then they asked at like the very end of it while they were editing all the episodes or, or something. I it threw me off completely. Is that fucking turkey? <laughs> I turkey, swear to yeah. God. That turkey yeah. is a weird situation, honestly. You can tell it's a G2 footage because it has more of the Green Ranger in it because they uh, made new scenes with the Green Ranger. Like right now, no, the turkey less... was before the Green Ranger. No, I'm just saying now, do we do two footage yeah. comes along, you'll see more of the Green Ranger. Like right oh, now, yeah, we don't, we don't see more. We don't see much of him. Because, you know, yeah, Burr I died. Burr died. So... Burr died. Yeah. <laughs> So after they finish uh, creating Shell Shock, we get uh, the gang playing uh, basketball some more with the bloody neon hoop net. Yeah, I, why is the fucking hoop net yellow, like highlighter yellow? I was like thinking about this, and I go like, "Hey, I remember back then, all the nets were like kind of different colors, so it makes sense." And it's clear if you look at it. That it was edited and made to look that way. Yeah. Like in and post. Like, oh, very much so. Very yeah. much so. And, and like fucking the, this pickup game of basketball that the three people are playing is like there's no rules. Because they just pass to each other with like no repercussions. Like there's no real divide on who's defense, who's offense. It's usually two on one. They're playing the horse. Yeah, because it, it, it's it's Zach, Tommy, and Jason playing, right? Yeah, they're playing, and then and, Trini, and they, Kim, and uh, Billy are off on the side. Like, two will be playing together against one guy defending, then two guys will be defending the one guy, and it makes no sense. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, like zero sense. It's like, it's, like TNA, it's like TNA booked this basketball scene. <laughs> when Russo was hired? Okay, no, no. Russo was hired as the writer for the show. <laughs> Russo was hired six years before WWF. Yeah, well, hired he was in charge of a blockbuster video or something like that, like a video store. Yeah. Oh my! Wait, no. You know what? That kind of makes sense. Uh, McMahon is a huge <laughs> fan of Power Rangers. That's my head cannon because he's loopy, and that's how he got some ideas for. That's how he got the idea for the Spirit Squad. It's because he's a fan of power. Are you ready to That's get the hilarious. Kenny? I'm gonna shove the Mikey up you. It's funny that Mickey is Jason. Yeah. And, and and so he decided to go and find who was the writer on the show because my God, this is some good shit. I'm not gonna make a shit joke. I already made my shit joke a while back. <laughs> And that's how he found Vince Russo, and the rest is history. <laughs> yeah. Very good. Very, very good. We, we've legit created, like, a whole nother parallel universe where just everything is dark. Yeah, like, Skull is a fucking murderer. Fucking <laughs> Batman is canon. <laughs> yeah. This is, like, the most fucked up Power Rangers. What kind of universe is this? We're truly on the darkest timeline. Yes, yes, we are. Oh my god. So so after a brief and cutaway after... to show Squad and Babu talking, uh we get a random ass hot dog car coming out of nowhere. 
No, 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 you, you skip the putty scene. You skip the putty fight. Yeah, the oh, putty fight. I just skip the putty fight. My bad. Yeah, because the putties show up in the middle of them playing basketball, and then we get a six on five putties versus Rangers basketball game, essentially. Yeah. And uh, again, they with do some w- with some more atrocious '90s editing where they repeat the same shot three times. Oh, yeah! 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 I was about to say that they repeat the same thing over and over. And they use and... a basketball to like hit the putties with and shit. Like he's like dunking yeah. on his head or something. Yeah. It's like Tommy. So Tommy dumb. was fighting them with the basketball, and then like they cut to Zach, uh, jumping and then doing a like dunking the basketball, and then the putties just disappear like they got served. <laughs> I will true. say, being hit in the face with those things, I will, will which I have multiple times. Basketballs are like rocks almost. God, if damn, they're they hurt the best Tommy move because he the putty goes over top of him and he just takes the ball and like just lifts the ball up into the gut of the putty. That's all he does. It's, it's so dumb. Yeah, it's like it's like, it's a big rock. It was a big rock. So after um, so so after the putty fight, we get a brief uh. Um, shot of Squad and Babu. Um, I, uh, and and yeah, they, they talk about how like they're not being able to beat the Power Rangers, and then Babu says something like, Oh, we're never gonna beat those Power Rangers. <laughs> oh my god, I forgot about that. <laughs> the Babu, I forgot about that too. Yeah. <laughs> 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 This show sometimes. <laughs> this show did some crazy things, and I love it. Yeah, rewatching. I, I love is... the '90s. This is just like if someone decided to take a bunch of drugs, and uh, j- j- like, or, or, it's like a writer from Saved by the Bell got fired for taking or for taking a bunch of drugs, and then just went on to go work on this show. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So then we get that mystical hot dog cart showing out of nowhere I was talking about before. Dean Ambrose shows up, yeah. Oh, be- before Dean Ambrose shows up, Tommy has to say, hey, I gotta go do something. I'll be back later. He's gotta go do his karate training. Yeah, because this the, you, you always have to say, like, hey, I gotta go do something, because, you know, and the it died, begins. And it begins, the Tommy always being somewhere else. <laughs> And this is the first time he just decides to. Uh, oh, I, I have a. I have a thing, and decides to go have another life. I yeah. have to go now. My planet <laughs> needs me. Yeah, Tommy and... died on the way to his home planet. <laughs> oh yeah, I can't help but get shades of Pierce from Community from like season five. Season five. Oh God, it's or, or, or season four. No, season five is where he, where they have the hologram. Oh, right, right. Pierce dies. Continue on this path, and you might miss your last chance to see the Pierce Hawthorne Museum of Gender Sensitivity and Sexual Potency. The museum and this hologram were donated in compliance with a court order I'm not allowed to discuss. It's me hologram? Yeah. I, have, I haven't watched Community. Yeah, he dies, and they make a hologram for him. He's, like, talking. <laughs> That's <laughs> awesome. That's <laughs> yeah, pretty good. Uh... And it, and That's it's pretty I, funny. Go, go to the Pierce Hawthorne uh, uh, gender sensitive or uh, gender sensitivity tr- uh, center or something like that. It was just, it was so dumb. It's like the most racist, sexist old man, and they go like the gender exclusivity. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. The gender equality and racial sensitivity center. All something. that he is not. <laughs> God, I love humor like that. Yeah. And he's not even dead yet when they get the hologram. He's just, they say he's banned from campus. And then he dies in the fifth episode from jerking off too much. It was dehydration from filling up all of those cylinders. <laughs> Is that what happened? Oh, yeah. Right. I thought, oh, God. Right. Damn. <laughs> I, I gotta watch this again. I completely forgot about that. That's another Where? one for the late. <laughs> Well, yeah, where he uh, ends up having his will read by Vina Van Dam from Sons of Anarchy. She's actually one of my favorite characters too. I I love Venus Van Dam. Um, but uh, but uh, the the will is read, and they're all given a fucking of a uh, container of his sperm. Oh my god! It's been forever <laughs> since I've seen this. <laughs> I'm so glad I'm not the first person to mention come on this episode. Um... <laughs> I know. Uh, right, well, no, I didn't. Say, I didn't say the name. I I just said the 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 the, the, the medical term. You said it. Ha. 
So speaking of come, hot dog man shows up. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> that that is not the kind of sauce I want on my dog, sir. Yes. What kind of fucking segue is that? I tried. I tried. <laughs> anyway, Bulk and Skull show up, and uh, we we <laughs> Bulk and Skull show up, and this is a uh, one of the first times I mentioned Skull's uh, Bret Hart glasses. Yeah, they do kind of look like Bret Hartish. Yeah, he like, really wears those and like pulls it off. I gotta say. Yeah. yeah, he wears those glasses really well. They're like the Liverpool glasses, and it's pretty sick. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I like. I like. I always like skull style in the show. He yeah, skull good always style. dressed way better than bulk. He's like a punk, but he really dresses more stylish. It's like he, he dressed cares. better than everybody. He dressed better than everybody. Yeah, I don't care. He's, he's got sure. really, he's got really good fashion sense because he has to keep making disguises when he murders people. <laughs> yeah, very true. <laughs> you know, even as adult, uh, in like samurai or, or super samurai or whatever, he still has amazing fashion sense as well. What skull? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, he was only there one time. Yeah, but he did have good fashion sense. Yeah. So, uh, Bulk and Skull shenanigans happen because the, 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 main fi- the main five were getting hot dogs. They were getting glizzies after, uh, after the fight. And Bulk and Skull show up. There's a little bit of shenanigans. Like, I believe uh, two of them grab Bulk, and then Trini is spinning Skull. And Trini throws a Skull into Bulk, piggyback ride impromptu into the hot dog cart and then you cut to them just having all of the toppings all over themselves and the hot dog guy is super pissed off uh we cut away to the hot dog guy literally whipping bulk and skull with his tongs and saying i'm going to have you work with me for two weeks so hot dog enslavement it's yeah, real it's real <laughs> i'm actually oh surprised they didn't show him doing that for the next two episodes i wish they did I would actually would have been genius. Yeah. Yeah, that would have been really that would have been a really funny side gag. So then we get a shot of uh Shell Shock and Squad and Babu and they're discussing their plans. And and then a- after <laughs> God, I, I hate this monster so much. I hate it. It's such a classic monster though. It's a traffic light. It's just it's Yes, I hey, agree. Like, remind me to rem- it's dumb. It's dumb. Remind me to never show you Car Ranger. <laughs> I- <laughs> we gotta definitely watch Car Ranger one day because insanity in that. Show. When, when we get the signal, man, you're gonna really have a nightmare. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, I, I guess I'll say this for historical rev- uh, re- 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 relevance later. I have only seen two episodes of Turbo and the movie, so I am not looking forward to that season. <laughs> oh, oh boy. I out of the really bad seasons, I I the only one I've seen is Operation Overdrive, and I actually don't mind it. Let's see, I told you it's not that bad. Oh, uh, I guess in Mystic Force, according to you, chumps. Uh, <laughs> Xander. Fucking so Shell, so the, their plan with Shell Shock is uh, he's going to distract them and get them with his stop ray. And then um, he will actually know first he fires his go ray, which explodes the the basketball. Yeah, and it's like it, the smoke clears and it's like a fiberglass shell of the bottom half of the basketball just sitting there in the grass. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> which I find hilarious because a basketball would not blow up like that. <laughs> not quite. Oh, apparently it does if it gets shot by a traffic light. Yeah, <laughs> and Jason points at him and goes like it's morphing time yeah uh, it's morphing time dude uh, it's morphing time we gotta get, we gotta get no, the turtle no we're not no not the voice wait you gotta get the turtle say it <laughs> we gotta get that turtle oh, come on we gotta do it it's morphing time okay so anyway after they morph we get the start of the fight <laughs> And, and and then his and and then his well, which I actually think this is a cool detail. His arm goes in his shell to retrieve his bat. Uh, also, before that, uh, we get uh, 
he fires his go ray again and hits Trini with it, and Trini uh, runs away because now she can't stop running. Right, that's it. Thank you. I really hesitate to make this joke, but he turns on Trini. Oh, snap. <laughs> okay, I think in that joke cements it. I hate this thing as much as I hate Psyduck. Psyduck. <laughs> 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 it's just it's completely irrational to a certain point but i just i hate it i hate it i hate it <laughs> come on Psy psyduck is great because he evolves into gold duck he's a dick <laughs> no, this is this is the uh the disaster movie breakdown of this episode the psyduck rant because <laughs> like i don't know what i don't really have much about. of a rant other than his stupid Duck build face just stupidly looking at me like he thinks he's better than me. That son of a bitch, like, just by looking at his eyes, he's like, headache. Yeah, you know what? I got a headache because I'm thinking too much because I'm better than you, you son of a bitch. Fuck well, you, is, you stupid mallard. But he is better than you. He is better than you, though. That's the thing. And this is your today's rant by the toy. Psyduck is better than everyone. Come on. Like, I don't I'm know. gonna eat you our Christmas, you fucking delicious monster. <laughs> he's a psychic duck, man. He's gonna kick he's gonna he's I, gonna parry you. I wish I knew what the fuck you guys were talking about, because I have no Pokemon. idea. Come on. Yeah, you, know, you, you see we see when you edit this later, you're just gonna find a picture of that Psyduck and just slowly zoom in on his face <laughs> during the rant. Uh, most likely, yeah. <laughs> Uh, so that's that's Malcolm's rant. <laughs> yeah, I needed so, that yeah, one. He, I needed that one. I was holding that it. one in for a couple of years. He takes his bat out of his like he pulls his arm into his shell and pull and pulls back out his bat, and then uh, we get the repeating editing when Squat throws up a baseball and he hits it and hits it and hits it. But it's actually a good use of it here because he's hitting like twenty or thirty baseballs at the Power Rangers. Apparently he has the speed of the Flash. Yeah, the speed of the no, Flash. No, he's just hooked it. He's got, he's just got uh, Doctor Sinvicta or whatever her name is. No, no, no. Speed Force gauntlets. No, he's friends with Mark McGuire. He uh, he's on the roids like Mark oh, McGuire. Oh, he's a, oh, what a reference! <laughs> what a reference! <laughs> Full sports that's reference, yo. That's the second most esoteric reference you're gonna hear tonight. <laughs> So then he, um, the, uh, we get a second attack after the bat when they uh, pull out the blade blasters and fire at him. We get uh, his head going inside his shell and coming out a cannon, which uh, uh, yeah, is kind of cool. Yeah, it's really cool. You got to admit, the it's cannon giving is me great. Megatron vibes. Megatron, like just how he transforms it, like how he transforms into a gun. Ah, oh, right, Me right, right. <laughs> Megatron or that one weird robot from like the fourth Michael Bay Transformers movie where it's like just just his head turned into a gun in one scene. You you watched the fourth Michael Bay Transformers Wait, movie? Wait, you watched that shit? My mom took me, okay. It was not one of his better moments. It, Let me get wrong. No, I saw, it wasn't. I saw the reboot, but not the four that met Bay one. I, saw I went to Breaking Dawn Part 2 in theaters as well. That's not one of my proudest moments as well my mom took me to that one as well Jesus. my mom took me to that one as well she sorry dragged me to that one as well but then luckily as punishment i took her to krampus years later you know what yeah. you, you know what movie my mom dragged me to one time and i was so uncomfortable go on that there's something about mary <laughs> <laughs> especially especially when the coming scene happened i go like mom why am i here <laughs> i i watched final destination 4 in theaters with my mom and there was that one scene that was like a really like actually like raw porn ish scene where one of the guys is fucking one of the chicks in, in at the pool yeah and i remember that entire time i'm just looking away from my mom just trying to avoid eye contact <laughs> yeah uh damn i saw wild hogs in the theater with my mom but that was a pretty wholesome family movie i don't know oh god <laughs> all right all right so he doesn't want to go along with it. Okay, good to know. So, so he, so I don't he... have any bad memories like that, though. I'm not <laughs> fucked up like you guys. Ah, right. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, he... hits three of the rangers with the stop ray and freezes them. <sighs> and, and then, and then just I I don't know if anyone pointed this out, but is, is this when we get the inconsistencies again with Goldar's voice? Yeah, this yeah, because then they cut to Pandora Castle and we start hearing Goldar's shit voice again. Yeah, from the pilots like. <laughs> And then it somehow gets worse when, like, Rita is Rita wakes up and is like, oh, you guys did really good, actually. I'm congratulating you. And then it cuts to a solo shot of Goldar, and he's just pissed off and banging the railing. And he sounds like Nappa. Not just Nappa. Team four-star Nappa. Hi, Taka. Good to see you. <laughs> He'll never watch this. If he watches this, then something's wrong. <laughs> Oh yes. Now it was be like you are into some obscure YouTubers. You're you're a hipster YouTube watcher. It's like I watch the cool. stuff that no one watches. Yeah, <laughs> no one. You cut back to the command <laughs> center, and Jason's with the frozen Rangers in the command center. Yep, Trini's not there because she's running. She's running for her life. She'll be dead now from all that running. Non-stop. Now, are these mannequins, or do you think it's just the Rangers just having to stay absolutely as still as possible? It's like funny you should the... mention that, because in the first shot, it's definitely the actors, because they move a couple times. Yeah. <laughs> it is I don't, know if it, I don't know if it's mannequins in any subsequent shots, but it's definitely them on the first shot. <laughs> like, it, it has to be after a while, because I, I can just see, like their arms just being like or them just being their helmets like after like five minutes of shoots and even like even longer of reshoots just being like you're just hard breathing in the suit i guess uh, oh no i i oh i i was saying kill me oh we, well, we couldn't hear it we couldn't hear it because you hear shit you yeah. were, was like kill me yeah, i was saying kill me oh there there, we hear. there yeah. it is that's better <laughs> we get them frozen in the command center and uh zordon is trying to explain that oh this is the this is one of the powers of shell shock and uh there's only one way to cure it with the mystical deanthrum deandra flower which uh, is only con- which is conveniently only grown in one place in the universe the mountain on mount hope here here on earth the mountain of hope <laughs> which earth. is conveniently here on earth <laughs> yes Th- this is like um superhero l- logic right here everything that's super important that like is super needed in the universe is all on earth yeah that's how yeah. it usually goes to. It's like DC Infinite Crisis logic. Or or like three of the Infinity Stones being in New York during uh, the Manhattan incident. The Battle like, of why New York. were three of them in New York? <laughs> eh, plot armor. <laughs> uh, plot reasons. Yes, and yeah, plot. Uh, then we get, um, I, I want to say, uh, we get the... Uh, get the I, I monster, lost my place. We get the monster this, like, oh, yeah. growing. This is, this is the monster growing. And this is what my favorite part of the episode. Because the, the shell shock grows. And then he walks into, into frame and says... Uh, what was it? It's wait until those teenage mutants get a load of the full, fully grown turtle like me. <laughs> teenage mutant. I forgot uh. about that line. Yeah, that line. It's one of two TMNT references in this episode. Very I'm true. surprised they got away with it. They only said teenage mutant. They didn't say the whole thing. Yeah, and the the other one is a bit more subtle as well. Mm-hmm. But yes, uh, shell shock grows and starts uh, attacking the the district. And I gotta say, with this Megazord sequence, uh, or, or or not this Megazord sequence, the Zord sequence, I always appreciate. I I gotta call it out again when single Zords get a chance to like fight the monster. Mm-hmm. Yeah, always. Like, fight. I, I love that. And, and the T Rex is like I'd say the most common one to do, probably because. He's the easiest to maneuver because you can actually put a guy in a suit and have some motion with him. Yeah, it's like that and the and the dragon zord are the two most common for that. But unfortunately, this monster is too much for him, so they need to call in reinforcements. 
cut to Tommy at the youth center, cracked on the sticks. He's going, he's going nuts on the uh, the quarter staff at the uh, at the youth center, and it's like, holy shit, this man is like actually crazy talented. Goated. He he is goaded on the sticks, my guy. Yes, and he hasn't uh, stopped after decades. Like uh, I, I remember, uh, or and he and he doesn't stop doing this even decades later. I remember on a Dino Thunder d- 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 DVD special, he was doing this, or on a DVD extra on that uh, d- d- Dino Thunder. He made Ooh. his own martial arts combination. This man made his own kind of martial arts. Yeah, that that's that's very impressive. God, yeah. We 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 said a lot about JDF in the last episode, but man, you are an absolute legend. We got back to training. He's still running in the forest. Run forest. And run. now he he he's now yeah. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> now running up. She's now running up the mountain of hope to uh get the Deandra flower, and <laughs> she gets there. And this is another dumb part. Bring the flowers to me! She basically says, I call upon the power of the saber-toothed tiger, not for me to stop moving, but for me to magically teleport the flowers from the top of the mountain into my hand. And then she stops moving! So she uses the force. (laughs) It's... 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 it's, You you dumbass! Yeah, she stopped moving. It's like, yeah, man... (laughs) I mean, we also, we also got a scary ass shot of the saber tooth tiger as well. Yeah, it was a pretty good shot. <laughs> it's just there. And, and then Trina says, rushes back. We uh, we get a brief shot of Cannon Head again, firing at the T Rex yeah. and the di- Dragon Zord, which is here for this part. Oh wait, sorry, hold on. It's uh, Tommy is back in the U Center. He's picking up his bag, and the communicator goes up, and Jason goes in the most monotone voice. Tommy, we need your help. Hey think? Tommy, I need the I need to help you. you need to I hate you. Here. I hate you. I was whispering to myself, don't do the voice, don't do the voice, don't do oh. the voice. <laughs> uh, yes. I only do it because Andreas loves it. So thank it, God we get the Dragon Zord coming out and then we get a two on one handicap match. Yep. Yeah. So it was With a clothesline as well. Where the two people lose at the start and then they get hit by the cannon. This is where Trini comes in and jumps all the way up to the top of shell shock's head starts dan- starts rain dancing on it because she has to run in place i can go twice as high take a look it's in a book a reading rain then drops the spores on shell shock which fries the electric circuits in his tra- traffic light and uh causes the go and stop ray to just cease malfunction <laughs> at the um, junction yeah, oh. apparently flowers stop traffic lights. Yeah. Makes no sense. Yeah. Yeah, Everything no, makes no it... sense in this real show. <laughs> and then yeah, that that unfreezes the uh the, the Zords and then they get to uh unfreeze they get the to finish Yeah. They get to finish off uh they get to finish off Shell Shock with the uh the dr- the dinosaurd beam that uh we had weird thoughts about it about 11 episodes ago where the zord finishes a monster and it just cuts to a shot of the dinosaur doing this move yeah like the <laughs> megazord and then it cut to the trash dinosaurus with well, the leg of the trash yeah, so the, t-rex yeah so the t-rex uh basically uh thanos snaps uh yeah and we get back to uh rita being angry as hell and, and this is the 10th i have a headache so this is another i ha yeah another i ha during the rita wrap up and uh, once again proclaimed she's going to get the Power Rangers, even though she hasn't really had a win since Green with Evil. And even with- then, that was that eventually ended in a loss. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And to be fair, that was like literally the last couple episodes. But even then, she still lost. She still lost, but she did something, but she lost. I agree. So then we get the conclusion at the end of uh, the guys of the gang once again playing basketball, or sorry, whatever game they were playing. Basketball. Well, yeah. as Adam pointed out, since they weren't actually playing like on teams, it could be Swedish. It could be a Swedish hockey for all I know. 
Yeah, and Zach all I know Tommy. is that Billy can dunk because yeah. we get Billy dunking at the end. And he says some really <laughs> wild shit, like technical wise. Like I don't know what he's saying. But he goes like, "I'm gonna go the super duper, the mega duper, or something, something." All technical jargon. But Billy is hood. He's a hooded. He's from the ghetto. <laughs> 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 Yeah, and also uh, Skull's victim could be a, the hot dog man because we never see the hot dog man again because he got tired yeah, of that shit. They're not in hot dogs in, that's why they're not in hot dog enslavement next episode. He decided oh, to kill the hot dog man. Because he fucking killed them. All right, listen, listen to me, Bill. I can just imagine Skull's like, listen to me for a second, Bill. Okay, you're going to shove this wiener down his throat so he chokes on it, and then I'm going to shoot him with his gun. <laughs> <laughs> But Skull, where'd you get this gun? Don't ask me questions. <laughs> Don't worry about it. I'm a punk. I know what I'm doing. <laughs> yeah, no, he doesn't say anything when Bulk asks him where he got the gun. He just shushes him and then does his hyena laugh. Yeah. Oh, my God, that's so dark. <laughs> oh, geez, Skull God. is indeed a psychopath. <laughs> what? Why did they have to shove the, the, the hot dog down his throat if he's just going to shoot him? Because Skull is kind of, it's a psychopath. Bulk is just there because he's scared. Yeah, no, he just made Bulk become a part of it because now he's he's an accessory to murder. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Everyone likes to say the cold opens aren't canon, but no, it's the the, the cold closes aren't canon. <laughs> <laughs> At least in our fucked up imagination. Oh yeah, in our head canon. <laughs> oh god, <All> right. <laughs> the next episode, episode twenty three, the itsy bitsy spider. Itsy Bitsy Spider. Yeah, give me the rundown, Malcolm. I don't like this episode. Yeah, it's not a okay, good one. So, so the basic rundown, it came out on October 12th, 93, and it was written by Steve Kramer and directed by Robert Hughes. Kramer, no. God, why is there so much profanity in this script? <laughs> why is there so much racism in this script? <laughs> I gotta why, is, do a... why is everybody? Why is everybody just being racist to Zach in this? <laughs> <laughs> the uh, Tolkien black guy. It's Tolkien. Oh, it's, it's, it's Tolkien. I, I, yeah, yeah, I love that South Park just gaslit their entire audience. Yes. If you or someone you know might have also thought the name Tolkien didn't come from J.R.R. Tolkien, then please call one eight hundred. I am a giant piece of shit. Anyway, uh, Itsy Bitsy Spider opens at, at Angel Grove High with uh, Trini uh, explaining the hashtag Save the Statue campaign. <laughs> it's not actually what it's called. I just put the hashtag there. Uh, they're saving the, I believe it's called the Forest Preservation Statue because uh, I believe the, uh, the the logic is that it was put there to help... Uh, you know, protect from bad insects, essentially. And they have some insects on a display that Zach is taking care of in the most poor call on Trini's part because Zach hates spiders. Ugh. And there's a big, and there's a big Maybe. tarantula there. Yeah. Yeah, neither did I. That's why this is another episode where I don't like the monster of the week. And Walter Jones <laughs> almost died during this, too. Yeah, we'll get there. What? We'll we'll get to that. We'll get we'll get to that bit in yeah. a second here because Bulk and Skull are there, and uh, Bulk and Skull are like, well, really? H how can that? How can a statue? Pre like, how can bugs be good for humanity? And then they're like, let's find out. Then they open up all the containers and throw it everywhere. So basically, Bulk and Skull are now hosting Fear Factor. <laughs> oh, Fear Factor! Before it was Fear Factor. Very good. <laughs> Bulk and Skull Factor. Yeah, Bulk and I just Skull want to Factor. give the cast of the sea of the series just a big hug because holy just crap, crap right? has this like over the years, every like the six have been through it, man. Yeah, yeah they've been yeah. through a lot. Uh, and then yeah, this is uh the, the tarantula lands on Zach's shoulder, uh, and Tommy tries to swat it off, but it jumps off before uh before. Tommy can actually hit it, and this is where we can talk about the tarantula actor, Andreas. Yeah, Walter Jones said that he, yeah, he almost died because, like, the trainer for tarantula said, "Hey guys, the tarantula already has been fed, so he's all good." But the one thing you have to worry about if he raises his two hind legs, he will bite, and that's not good. But don't worry about it; he has been fed. Is that Walter Jones goes like, "All right," so they put the spider on him, and as soon as they yell action, the spider. Raises his two hind legs, and the trainer goes like, oh, shit. 
<laughs> has to quickly get the spider off him. And Walter yeah. Jones, like, shitting himself. Yeah, so Walter Jones almost got bit by a tarantula. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh, that sounds cool. Yeah. He gets the spider he powers. Becomes... He becomes Miles Morales. He becomes Miles Morales. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Now, wait. Now you you can't do that because then you're mixing Marvel and DC in the same universe. Could be a different universe. You know, there's a bunch of multiverses. Superman has met Spider Man before. After the chaos, after the after the chaos, and uh, in the uh, in the hallways, uh, they bulk and skull clear out, and they eventually like try and start cleaning up. Then we cut to uh, the woods at night, uh, despite it being daytime. It's, and, we're doing uh, Ed Wood style and, cinematography right now. Yeah, this is like the middle of the night. So the uh, I believe it's Finster is with them and is basically telling or, or no, it's Babu and Squat with them because Finster is never out. Uh, Babu and Squat is with them and they're going to make the forest preservation statue disappear. And uh, the putties pull at David Copperfield and make the statue disappear by putting a cloth on top of it. They they have transported to Pandora Castle. We cut to the next day, I assume, in the uh, in the hallway, and uh, I believe it's Billy, Kim, and Trini are in the hallway talking. Trini, and, Kim, uh, and then Zach shows up. Yeah, and yeah, yeah they're talking about how uh, the Mister What's His Nuts, I forget the name, of the teacher was really pissed off when only a few bugs were returned. Uh, and uh, Mr. Kaplan, yeah, because all the oh, no, it's no, not Mr. Kaplan, it was like the science teacher. I don't know his name, yeah, we never see Uh, the science teacher, yeah, yeah, we never meet the science teacher, but yeah, he's pissed. Another bulk victim, yeah, (laughs) (laughs) he's pissed because no, you see, the reason he's dead is because he let the uh, the let let the tarantula out Mm. in the middle of the day, yeah. Did they ever Uh, find a tarantula? I'm assuming not because they only found I think it was a few ants and some crickets. Yeah. So the tarantula is out there somewhere, stalking its next victim. Yeah. Uh, and uh, then Rita then gets Billy, great idea. Then yeah. Then Billy comes out and Billy has uh, Jack, the uh, the little lab rat who. Well, uh, actually, Billy doesn't come out for a couple more years. Actually, uh, he's right. Do you know that? Oh, oh damn! Oh, it was right there. It was. Oh my god! I resisted. I, I, That's not cool. That is in, totally insensitive. Come no, on. it's not. But he, yeah, he comes hey, out from one gay later. man to another. I can respect that. Hold on, you're gay. You're not gay. <laughs> well, not. Well, just, okay. Edit this part out on nope. your ass. <laughs> nope. <laughs> no, this is the no. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> anyway, anyway, he has Jack the Mouse. We just yeah, like ignore. Just Jack ignore. Jack Mouse. You know what? At least I didn't make Columbine jokes in this episode yet. So. <laughs> that is true. That's the reason you deleted that one episode. Uh, I plead the fifth. <laughs> so Jack, Jack the Lab Rat is there, and uh, I believe it's yeah no it's it's Trini, Kimberly, and Zach is there, and also uh. Tommy, I believe, is also there. Uh, but a bunch of them are there. And, you know, the lab rat is there. And then Bulk and Skull show up. And uh, they're like, oh, look, they have a mascot now. <laughs> I believe Bulk is like, well, if he's so smart, uh, how would he feel about doing an obstacle course? And he throws a, a book at Billy's hands. Uh, Billy drops the mouse. The mouse lands on the floor. And immediately, like, Quick as a whip it with a bum full of dynamite. Shoots up uh, Skull's pants. Makes him do the Elvis dance. Yeah, Skull does the the flailing around and a bit of an Elvis dance. Uh, is obviously really freaked out. And uh, uh, Trying not and to shake the Riddler fucking beret he's wearing. Billy pulls uh, Jack out of the back of Skull's shirt. And Zack says... Uh, Zach says, "Yeah, take that bulk and skull. Uh, the uh, that mouse is smarter than some humanoids I know." Well, fuck you too. Oh, and what? we all just slowly, we just all slowly look at Andreas. Like, hey, shots fired. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> Zach just doesn't like this podcast. Apparently, yeah, he doesn't. <laughs> then we cut to Bandora Castle, and we get the uh. 
we, we get Finster seeing, oh, look at this really intricate Earthling statue. They must have taken an hour to make this one. <laughs> like, damn, shots, shots fired at the art committee. <laughs> Finster is a, a whole hour, and we get the actual plan, which is uh, uh, Rita is going to throw down a imposter statue, uh, filled with bugs, and her monster of the week, the Spidertron. What a name, which, the Spidertron! Yeah, just the sadly Spider-Tron. isn't a transformer. Right. It's not. A, it's not. Unfortunately, but it is a more creative name than some of the some of the ones we've seen in the past. It could be a Predacon against the Maximals. Don't. I, don't raise my hopes like that. Ah. It, it, the, the spider does have missiles. So he is Tarantulas. I live. I live. I, I hate the design of this monster, though. Yeah, it's, it's just a it's just a big sphere with spider features on it. It doesn't even have like multiple legs. It still looks too much like a spider from for me to like it. It's one not one of the best monsters. It's, it's definitely it's, not. It's not a good design. It's absolutely. kind of a weak like design. It's yeah. like an uncanny valley spider. What I do like is the Trojan the Trojan statue concept with uh, the spider Tron inside, and also. Uh, moths made of sleeping powder, which is going to make a bunch of people go to sleep, including the Power Rangers, apparently. <laughs> then, uh, moths. We cut... yeah. Nature's we cut... dickhead. Nature's dickhead, yes. Then we cut to uh, everyone except Tommy and Zach out in the desert wilderness. Out, like, in, the, out, out in the half, park. Like grassland. Oh, yeah, and park. they're looking. They're going to be looking for bugs. Zach's not there because one, he's terrified of insects, and two, he's teaching a hip hop keto class. Yeah, for the first time that we see him do that was other kids. The first time we see him teach hip hop keto. Yeah, and as for Tommy, he's never there. Yeah, he's doing it. He's doing his side quest. Yeah, he's doing his side quest that I'll talk <laughs> he... about later. He he's secretly off in his side plot investigating the mysterious murders that have been taking place all throughout Angel Grove. Like, why is there always a punk band on these guys? Tommy Oliver, the world's greatest detective. Yeah. <laughs> well, it all started with the disappearance of a boy named Willie. Yeah, it all started with <laughs> Willie. It's all coming back to Willie. It all just it all just bleeds from there. Oh, uh, Zach is doing yeah. some good hip hop keto. Poor to Willie. Kid. There, there's a there's a bug catching compilation where they just catch a bunch of bugs, and Billy has uh, one of the coolest uh, like bright pink bug nets, uh, yeah. which I just it's just it it it's a, it's an eyesore. It just it stick out sticks out there, and I'm like, you better fucking use that in some way that isn't catching bugs. No, there's there is a putty fight here, and it's pretty normal standard stuff. And then we get to the main man, the absolute G. O A T goat Billy the bad bitch Cranston. Yeah, he's indeed a bad bitch <laughs> who is using his bug net to uh basically twirl and th- twirling towards freedom. <laughs> just a bunch of fun fighting stuff with his bug net that just really caught my attention. Even though he knows how to fight, I asked you guys about this, and you go, was like. He just doesn't want to fight because he's too good. He just uses yeah, other he's stuff. Just too much of a pass. He's too much of a pacifist. He just thinks you know, fighting should only be reserved when he's in the suit. I guess. Yeah. Wait till season uh, two where he just knocks motherfuckers out. Hell, hell yes. Yeah. Uh, then, then we cut to Zach's hip hop keto class, and he's teaching. I think it's like nine or ten kids hip hop keto in the park. With uh, this is the shot that is in the uh. In the in the opening staff credits. in like the cast in the opening credits, that's the word I was looking for. Yeah, this is the shot with like the the weird gyration dance. Yeah, and uh, then he's teaching this one gormless blonde kid. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he just looks like he's fucking. He's not there. Uh, yeah. He's te- he's teaching this kid a little like shuffle kick move. And then uh, the kid does it, and it's like, he's like, oh, that, that's all right. But I think you need funkier music, which is a nice way of saying that was shit. Yeah, he's being nice. Like, dude, your moves are whack. He goes to put in funkier music, and then uh, 
<laughs> he's like, oh, I, le- I left the I left the cassette tape in the other car, uh, in, in my car. So I'll need to go run and get that. You guys just practice without me. So Zach abandons nine children in the park. Oh, won't somebody please think of the children? Such a bastard <laughs> for that. Like, you don't abandon children in a park. Like, and of, let and alone of course, mon- you, you live in a town where monsters keep invading, let alone that. But there's, there's creepy people in parks, man. That do uh, yeah. bad things and for children. Don't leave people. children alone in parks. Yeah. They're yeah. skinny weirdos and berets. Yeah. yeah. Who might kill you a lot. <laughs> oh, God. So, of course, Zach abandons them. And of course, what happened, they have been taken advantage of and they are all roofied by the spider, by the uh, the, the sleeping powder moths. Moths. So they all get drugged in the park, Jesus. which is just typ- typical <laughs> Edmonton Park behavior. <laughs> Phrasing boom. Uh, Zach comes back and is like, wait, what, what's everyone doing? You guys are joking. Why are you and, acting like Jason? He's not Jason. <laughs> no, that wasn't my Jason voice. I was just saying stuff. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. <laughs> You'd be able to tell if I was saying uh, my Jason voice because, you know, it sounds like Arnold Schwarzenegger meets Tommy Wiseau. Very true. Very, very true. <laughs> anyway. Malcolm uh, is stupid. Anyway. Yeah, no, he, he's just pissed off. It's fine. I'm just going to ignore that. Uh, <laughs> We get the, the the most esoteric reference in the batch of five episodes because uh, the sleeping powder moths are now coming for Zach, and Zach says, "Oh, if I don't get out of here right now, it's Rip Van Winkle time." Yeah, that's Jeez, not right. God <laughs> damn it! <laughs> I actually I don't know if anyone here knows about Rip Van Winkle, but I actually looked it up. So if you guys want to know, yeah, I know uh, about Rip Van Winkle, but you can go ahead, go ahead. Rip Van Winkle was a short st- story that was written by American author Washington Irving uh, following a Dutch-American colonial who uh, named Rip Van Winkle who meets some mysterious Dutchman, uh, drinks their strong liquor, and falls asleep in the Catskills for 20 years. And 20 he wakes years? up 20 years... He- yeah, he wakes up 20 years later after the American Revolution. <laughs> so anyway, uh, Zach runs away, and he ends up r- bumping into the uh, the the flat the the forest preservation statue, which, thanks to his keen eagle eye, he realizes that there isn't flowers in the in its hair; it's snakes in its hair, and it honestly it doesn't really look that different. Yeah, it looks the nah. same. It looks the same. Yeah, not really. But he's able to discern that this is probably Rita's plan. So he 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 transforms here and uh, shoots uh, shoots the the statue with his blade blaster. And okay. out comes spider out comes the giant meatball that is Spidertron. In his face so much. <laughs> there's a there's a bit of fighting here, and then we get the a weird PowerPoint transition again, where Zach gets hit, and then <laughs> it just he gets hit by Goldar. Thing. Yeah, he get, oh yeah, Goldar is oh, also yeah. there. That's I forgot to mention Goldar is there. They're their t- tag teaming Zach, and then he gets hit by Goldar, and he hits Zach so hard that the scene PowerPoint transitions back to the Rangers that were catching bucks. Yeah, the weird one. <laughs> Zordon calls in the reinforcements and brings in uh, the rest of the team. Yeah, uh, of course, I excluding Tommy. Yeah, of course, they he's all on morph side in quest. and head in. And we get, uh, we get basically, while he's small, the Spider Tron's one attack, which, attack, which is uh, throwing white streamers that clump together really close onto the Rangers. Yeah, it's ribbing. Excuse it, yeah. me. It's a it, special it, fluid. It's a very special it, fluid. It's definitely, it's definitely not a fluid that uh, that would, yeah, uh, it's way it, it, It's a special. It, it's a special stringed fluid that comes out when he gets really excited. <laughs> God damn it. God fucking damn it. Uh, then uh, uh, Zach gets up, shoots both of them uh, with the blade blaster. Goldar goes away just randomly. And uh, Rita makes the Spider-Tron grow. And then we cut Let back to the Rangers. Let my Spider-Tron grow. Let my spider and- grow, she says. Yeah, and the spider grows. We cut back to the rangers, and the streamers are just, like, the webbing is just off of them now, so it evaporated really quickly, I guess. Didn't do anything. Yeah. 
Good job. Yeah, they get up and we need Dinozord power, and then they they obviously create the Megazord. Me- Megazord sequence, and we get the beginning of the fight, and then yeah. we get the spider shooting uh, fucking bubbles out at him. Fucking bubbles! No, no, like if if the other stuff wasn't that very special substance that we were talking about earlier, uh, this is definitely it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like it, 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 if we thought it there is. was a lot before, this is a bukkake. Yeah, this is definitely a bukkake. Or if you want a wrestling reference, this is the dry ice that hit Triple H's stomach at uh, WrestleMania 29. <laughs> Hence, why it burns. And and, uh, and so, unfortunately, the Megazord suffered second degree burns from this fight. Yeah, which meant it couldn't wrestle a good match. <laughs> Uh, and then obviously because of uh, the the fluid, uh, the Megazord is having issues fighting the uh, the Spidertron. So uh, Zordon calls in the second batch of reinforcements, which is Tommy. Uh, we cut to Tommy in the forest um, training with an actual like for real damn katana. <laughs> like it's 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 real because like he's swinging it and then as soon as the communicator goes off he stabs it into the dirt and it like they're, actually sticks there. They're really pushing the I'm uh Jason David Frank and I actually know karate and kung fu and whatnot and can actually hurt people. Yeah. I, this is the uh, Ernest the Cat Miller gimmick where he's like, I could actually kill you with my bare hands. Or like Dan Severn in the Royal Rumble where he can actually kill everybody in that match. Yeah. So mm. then he, uh, Tommy gets called in. Uh, Morph, Morph calls in the Dragon Zord. And as, as the Dragon Zord is walking into the fight, uh, fucking Jason looks up and just says, Morphin. <laughs> I forgot about that. Morphin. He's just, just so Morphin. So it's, a, it's stupid how they're trying to make Morphin a 90s catchphrase. They kind of, they tried, but they couldn't get like it. Like Morphin, Morphinominal. Morphinominal it, it, it actually worked. It's stupid. Morphin didn't so, work, but Morphinominal actually worked. I do like really Morphinominal. It really, so, though. So, yeah, they, they also, I forgot to mention, they, they de-Megazord. I forgot to mention that. I think this is the first time they de-Megazord mid-fight. I want to say so, yeah. And then um, and, and then uh, when the Dragon Zord comes in, we uh, get a brief two-on-one handicap match before we get the Dragon Zord in fighting mode. Yep, the Dragon Zord in fighting mode, which uh, I always yeah. want to call the Mega Dragon Zord, but apparently that comes later. Mm-hmm. So my, my biggest pet peeve whenever they create the Dragon Megazord, whatever it is... Um, so does the Mastodon and Triceratops and Triceratops and Tiger, right? Yeah. So yeah, why is the Pterodactyl flying around shooting things, and why isn't the T Rex uh, backing him up like Paul Heyman backs up Roman Reigns? What, what, oh, what, well, okay. Yeah. To be fair, the Tyrannosaurus does back up the mega, the, the Dragon Zord in fighting mode sometimes. As for the uh, the Pterodactyl, I I assume it's because Haim Saban didn't want to shell out the extra like three dollars to make a mini of the Pterodactyl. Or probably we'll have maybe back it's to the sort of like how the arc reactor for Tony Stark in the first Iron Man movie it could power his life for a very long time, but it can power the Iron Man suit for an even, but a short amount of time, but because it's so powerful. My theory is when the Megazord is active, uh, other Zords, if they're not active, the power has to be turned off to preserve it because it's just, it's using such a lot of power because giant robot. Maybe uh, they don't want to strain the morphing grid. That, that, that's a that fair bit no of logic, sense. actually. That makes no sense at all. Yeah, no sense. Oh, fuck you guys. It does make sense. Yeah. No sense. I, I... Anyway, so the. Oh really? Continues. Oh really? Then explain too much pink energy is dangerous. Yeah. Question. No, not pink is dangerous. Too much pink energy. And to also answer mm-hmm. your question, there's a simple explanation for that. <laughs> god damn it, go say. <laughs> oh I my can't god. Can't wait to get to that. Uh, god. No, actually, I can't wait. I can wait a long time. Yeah. Uh, so we get. Uh, we get. 
my the best guess of- or my hope is that this podcast gets canceled before we get to super <laughs> <laughs> never <laughs> never uh, so we get the dragon sword we'll we get dragon sword stabbing the spider yeah, get the, yeah the dragon sword does its finishing move which is literally punching a hole in the enemy so Tommy officially murders a spider, aka he's still fucking evil. Yes, yes, he is. <laughs> oh, Wait, damn. No, Lord no, no, Tommy's not in there. Remember, this was established an episode or two later. Tommy's still standing on the top of the oil derrick or whatever, playing his flute while everybody else is in the cockpit. Oh, Mas- uh, yeah, Zach, is, who, Matt, is- Zach is driving the thing, so he's oh, so a- Zach's evil. Okay, I no, was gonna say when they show the cockpit, all five are in there and. And Jason's still in that lead driver position. Oh yeah, so Jason. Uh, wait, 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 wait. No, I no. actually, I actually can debunk that because in in the shot it was just Zach, yeah, Trini, sorry. and Billy in, yeah, in, the, in the in the cockpit. It's only Zach, Trini, okay. and Billy. Yeah. I know a couple episodes later they have that same thing where it shows the five of them in the cockpit and Jason just standing on top of an or Tommy standing on top of an Earl Derek playing his flute. Yeah, no. So it's either Zach is a murderer now or Tommy is still evil. But I would like to say that Tommy is still evil so I can say, Lord Draken, is that you? Yes. Uh, Z- Zach's a murderer. Damn. Yeah. And then so... he just goes back to hip hop keto and just be like, hey kids, this is how you do it. Your, ha- your murderer is teaching kids. Mm. Before we continue to wrap up, I swear I'm having a Mandela Effect episode with this episode. Oh, yeah, you brought this up, and then you just couldn't find anything about it. Go on. Because I swear to God, in the deep court, when Zach is showing Hip Hop Keto move, there's, like, in the background in the woods, there's the Dragon Zor just chilling there, but now it's not there. And I swear to God, back a couple years ago, it was there, and everybody was talking about it. But now I think that was a, that was that was debunked as somebody at ed- somebody did edited that. That's what I'm saying. If I'm having a Mandela episode, could someone explain this to me? Like, no, no, no. Somebody, somebody, a, a fan created that. Oh, a fan created that. That was that was that was that was debunked as completely false because people got mad. If that was somebody put out a yeah, it was just someone made a fan edit. edit. Oh, okay. It was yeah, edited with the dragon sword out back. It was all it was just a oh, fan okay. edit. Yeah, all right, it just I... looked like it just kind of. That and it also kind of looks like the dragon door, the, the little branch that's in that area. Yeah, because it kind of looks like the image uh, is kind of weird looking, is what I'm saying. Yeah. But so like, we get the. But like the I said, finale. thank you for letting me know that because like that's been bothering the shit out of me because I was having a Mandela effect thing there. Luckily, we found out that it's just a it's just a Mandela effect. Uh, uh but yes, so Zach finishes teaching his hip hop keto class to the children, especially Gormless McBlondie. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, who is who, who is the the victim from this episode? I'm pretty sure. Yeah, because I'm pretty sure he does Blondie McWhiterson. Yeah, Blondie McWhiterson. <laughs> uh, and then we go. We cut back to the uh, to the school for the rest of the wrap up, where Trini is saying, "Oh, guys, the city council actually said that we're that we can no longer tear down the statue. It's a historic land site here in Angel Grove." Everyone cheers, and also Tommy. Why is your shirt? Why is your chest out? Because Kim's there. He wants to show his chest. <laughs> no, but it's like a, it's it's a, it's a public school. It's a public school, and he's buttoned down like two buttons lower, so his chest is just out. Yeah, because yeah. it's public school, not private school, so he can yeah. do whatever the fuck he wants. Because <laughs> sex sells. Yes, I guess. Yeah, fair enough. So everyone's excited, and Tommy's like, "Hey, Zach, I'm really glad that you got." over your fear of spiders and zach's like yeah i did get over my fear of spiders and tommy said well that's good because there's a big one on your left shoulder right now and zach shrugs like it's a joke then he looks over at his left shoulder there's a spider on there and he just starts screaming tommy takes it off and says it's rubber dude <laughs> you dick da, 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 da. and zach tommy's a shit out of him off screen tommy's a fucking dick yeah <laughs> Uh, Tommy's still many, evil. One of the many moments Tommy of is Tommy is evil. just a dick. I'm just expecting Tommy's eyes to flash green there. Oh, that'd be so awesome. Oh, that would be. Yes. That would be an interesting storyline, like the coin slowly regaining its evil power. I'm pretty sure that's a storyline in the comic books. I'm not sure, though. That would be a pretty cool storyline, honestly. And, uh... Of course, like I said, Blondie McWhiterson is the victim of this episode, I'm pretty sure. And uh, I would say Jack is also a victim of this episode, but I'm pretty sure he just, like, 
Billy fried him accidentally, I'm sure. They're all so dead. now. They're all, now they all are pretty terrible people on this show. Yeah, they especially the Bulk and Skull. They're, they're all shitty children. <laughs> well, it's the fact that Bulk and Skull are actually the best, some of the best people. It's Bulk and Skull out of all these, it's fucked up. Yeah, very yeah. True. So now we move aside on from all the season. times they sexually harassed uh, Kimberly. <laughs> yeah, and they still do yeah, that. I, not only that, but Tom. Not only that, Tommy also keeps nagging Kimberly. So, uh, oh, yeah. he's an ass. Yeah, he wants. He, I'm yeah. Not, yeah. So, next episode. Now episode, we move on to season one, episode 24, The Spit Flower. Malcolm, who did this one? Uh, yeah. Oh, yes. Uh, this one, let's see. Uh, it. it aired October 19th, 1993, and was written by Peggy Nicole and directed by David Blythe. All right. Okay. Mm. Mr. So, Blythe again. Mr. Yeah. Blythe. So we open on the Blythe. youth center, and uh, Kimmy, Kimmy, what? Kim and Tommy are coming to youth center, and they're, they're about to build a float. And Ernie says, "Like, hey, yeah, you can like do all your stuff over there. Just don't mess the up model the model of Kimberly float." By the way, <laughs> just it doesn't really look like anything. It just looks like a cat. And like some flowers. There's a saber tooth tiger on there and some flowers. Yeah. yeah. It's kind of weird. It's for the parade. Why is she doing a parade? Because all the, they're all goody two shoes. They're always doing something for extra activities. Yeah, and she wants to be a part of this whatever. This <laughs> I, I'm gonna call it the Angel Grove Thanksgiving Day Parade. Yeah. <laughs> uh Bulk and Skull come in, of course, being dicks, and they go, Bulk goes over to the flower, sniffs it, finds out he's allergic, and goes like Sneezes right into Skull's face, and Skull is like, damn. And also blows his nose on Skull's neckerchief. Oh, right, that too. And yeah, that, 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 that's just so gross, man. Like, that it, it's nasty. Uh, and also, like, just don't sneeze in somebody's face like that. Like, why? We also forgot to mention that in this scene, Skull does an ooh-woo voice when he's like, oh, it'll give you a widow party float, <laughs> ooh-woo. Oh, I'll punch you just for talking like that. Ooh, ooh. Oh, okay. <laughs> Who's that uh, Rick and Morty character that goes like, ooh wee? <laughs> That's Mr. Urge to kill rising. <laughs> Mr. T- yeah, Mr. Tickle. <laughs> that, was Mr. that was Mr. Meesteek. Oh, yeah. It's like, I, all I can hear is Bulk saying, ooh wee. <laughs> I just want to die. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Jesus. Or no, Mr. Poopy Butthole, that guy. Ooh. Oh, that is Mr. Poopy Butthole. Yeah, actually, I'm sorry. I, I haven't watched Rick and Morty. Yeah, it's all the same voice by Dan Harmon. No, not Dan yeah. Harmon. Whatever his name is. Uh, uh, no, the other guy we don't talk about the, anyway. The guy that we don't talk about anymore. Yeah, that guy. So we cut to the moon base, and we goes like, oh, a float, huh? I'd rather fuck that shit up for no reason, because Red, Red is apparently pretty. <laughs> fuck that up. <laughs> Yeah, she for no reason she goes like I'm gonna destroy that thing just to fuck with him. Uh yeah. So we cut back to the youth center and Tommy and Kim are both alone and Tommy is like macking on her and the flirting is going yeah. well until the putties do a cock block and show up. First time that the putties have shown up inside the youth center, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, the first time the putties are in the youth center. I wanna say so, yeah. And we get the editing of Tommy wearing, wearing his hat, not yeah, the hat. Yeah, the most the atrocious hat. editing that I think Malcolm should explain. Yeah, explain it, Malcolm. <laughs> oh, I hate it. They all hate it. It was like, it, he starts off because his, his outfit in this scene is like a, a checkered green overshirt, <laughs> then a green tank top, and a green hat. So oh. he, he like starts off with, you want to continue, Malcolm? Yeah, it's like he he, it's the saga of him with with his goddamn clothes in this scene. I nearly pissed myself when I first saw it. So it's like he he's wearing it, and then it comes off, uh, like his hat and his shirt come off, and, yeah. and then you see it back on, and then his shirt gets pulled off again. His overshirt gets pulled off again. It comes back on. And then his hat. Then it's gone again. Off. And then his hat and his shirt. Then his come hat's off. gone again. And then his hat comes back on. And then it ends with a. 
the, the fighting scene ends with the hat on the ground. <laughs> yeah, it does. It's kind of weird. It is the funniest guy. editing I have ever seen in this show, and I think it, it's quickly become one of my favorites just for this scene. Yeah, that old the editing, 90s editing. I, I, w- I, wish Skull, I wish Skull would have murdered the hat at the end of this. <laughs> <laughs> Who's to say he didn't? If Skull, no, if we Bulk, see, you see the hat again. If, no, Bulk, fair. if Bulk wasn't his best friend, he would have killed Bulk for sneezing on him. Yes. <laughs> It's like, I'll let you pass. True. I'll let you pass this time, but not again. <laughs> I also um, remember this episode uh, a lot from my youth. Like, this is one of the episodes I caught when I was younger. Um, I, I just remember this episode because Kimberly was, like, shedding full tears over her float that she worked so hard on. I'm just like, holy shit, this is, like, really good acting over a float. Like, yeah. Like, this isn't Sophie's yeah. choice. Like, your children acting? aren't dead. That was terrible acting. Hey, for Fox Kids in the 90s, or that's what it was. Oscar worthy. Yeah. <laughs> it was it's Oscar like right worthy. Up there. It's like right up there with uh, Billy's acting in Power Ranger Punks. <laughs> yeah. And, oh, now, that was her Oscar worthy performance, was Power Ranger Punks. I will die by that. <laughs> I also will die by that hill. <laughs> So yeah, oh, Kim is like crying on the floor and the gang goes over to cheer her up. Uh, we go cut back to the moon base. And Rhea says like, Finster, what monster do you have for me today? Oh, I got a combination of different things from different shows from the previous episodes. He's called the Spitflower. Malcolm, you want to introduce us what this or guy like, looks like? Or like the scientific name of it was like the Flora Escondido or something. Something like that, but they chose the Spitflower. It is one of the weirder designs of this show. Like, it's to me, it kind of reminded me of um, the Terror Toad. Yeah. Like, it it almost looked like a ripoff of a Terror Toad. But honestly, one of the only notes I had for this was why did they have to make flowers scary? It has a ball sack on its chin. Oh, yeah. I completely forgot it has the ball sack. Oh, yeah. Right. Purple ball sack. Yeah. Oh, that purple ball sack. Oh, my Look God. Look out, it's a Balginian. Oh, ball my God. Chinian. Yes, it's a Balginian, sir. Okay, now, like that now, one all want, now all I want is the Men in Black crossover with Power Rangers. God now we it. need a Men in Black crossover, <laughs> definitely. It's like, that, it's like that one episode of uh, South Park where Butters has balls on his chin. <laughs> Honestly, Andre, I, 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 would, I would read that comic book from IDW or watch that. Oh, no. Boom, Boom Studios. Boom, Boom Studios. Studios. Okay. Yeah, that's the power. Wait, what did you call it before? What did you say? Uh, no, I said IDW. That no, that is the studio that did the Power Rangers fights Godzilla. Oh, comic. okay. But that's right. also the company that does Turtles. Right. Oh, right, right. So we cut back mm. to the youth center, and the gang is cleaning up the place. And I'm wondering, where the hell is Ernie during all this? <laughs> it's like he owns he, the place. He had to. He had to run out. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Very true, but for that long, yeah, get the runs. Come on, man, get the runs. The point that I have for this part is the sexual tension between Tommy and Kimberly is staggering. Oh, of course. Like Kim is in the background crying, and Tommy's thinking with his dick. I was like, "Hey, I think I can repair this. I'll go to my garage and do this, so I can get some later. I'll do it in secret as well, so I can make her extra wet." Yeah. (laughs) So Tommy goes on his side quest again, and leaves. Yeah. <laughs> and Zordon calls the Rangers. It's time to go to the command center. And they go to the command center. Zordon tells them that there's the spit flower that just spits flowers. Get it? Huh? Huh? Goddamn the show. <laughs> oh my God. So they Does morph. know these names. Yes. <laughs> like I said, he's just a giant head in a tube. He has nothing else to which, do. Which bad guy is, is feeding him information? Ooh. Is it Babu? Is Babu feeding Zordon information? Probably Babu, yeah, most likely. Did he die in the Z-Wave? No one knows. He probably got spared. Because you know Goldar did. <laughs> but anyway, I'm talking too much about that, the Z-Wave. We'll get to that. So the Rangers show up, and they're fighting flowers, which is kind of weird. And the Balchinian monster <laughs> attacks, <laughs> attacks them with his balls. Balchinian. Balchinian. Uh, of course, while he's winning, Rita decides to make the monster grow. He grows, and to still get their ass kicked, 
We cut back to Tommy's garage, which is pretty much Billy's garage. He, it's he's basically like, the same it, set. It, and it, he, is Tommy like boarding at Billy's house? Is that probably? what's going on? He is a new kid. I don't know. We ever yeah. met his parents. I know we I don't think we met his parents Zio. either. I think Zio's where he meet his brother. Are we sure oh, that yeah. he's not just working in uh, in B B B Billy's basement? Probably. Oh yeah, and Zio is where he meets his brother. Yeah, but that's later. All right. So uh, Alpha yeah. calls him, saying like, "Bill, uh, T not Billy, <laughs> Tommy, we need your help. Get done with your side quest already, and get over here." So he moves yeah. on out, helps the Rangers. Oh, and they have a battle. They call the Dragon Zord. Oh. Sorry, did I did no? They actually don't call the Dragon Zord. Yeah, they uh, do. First of all, I oh did do they? Yeah, they did. I could have sworn. <laughs> did we already talk about the bit where Bulk and Skull are all are fighting flowers? Uh, not yet. We haven't gotten into that part yet. Yeah, we haven't gotten there yet. Okay, good. Yeah, so they call it upon the Dragon Zord, and they get the Triceratops, Sabertooth, Tiger, and Mastodon to get. To the Dragon Zord in fighting mode, it's still kind of weird. I rather prefer Mega Dragon Zord, but I understand that's later. Mm -hmm. And uh, Spitflower blows flowers on the Mega Zord, and this is the first time we see all five of them in the same cockpit, even though it's the Mega Zord. And Tommy's yeah, not I, in there. Yeah, it's just the five main it's just the five people in the Dragon Zord in fighting mode. Yeah, but oh my God, a, defeated by Petunias. Petunias, my god. <laughs> Defeated by Petush. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and Zordon, we cut back to Command Center. Alpha's going like, oh no, they're losing. Zordon goes like, bring him back. Bring him back. So he goes like, hey, hey all you have to um, get him in his weak zone, weak spot, which is below the belly, I think. I Which is also the, the same back. weakness of uh, of, of uh, the Terror Toad. Yeah, it's the same yeah. thing because it's the sort of Have same recycled like, soft underbelly. Yeah, because it's the recycled footage of the Terror Toad with some other monster. Yeah, yeah, and I believe this is the scene where Bulk and Skull are covered in the Spit Flowers flowers. Yes. So now we cut to Bulk and Skull running through the park in the fakest flower designs ever. And they're yeah. so they're so great at it. <laughs> yeah, it's it's it, it looks like shit though. Yeah, they, they legit you to live it up. It, if you zoom in on the flower, uh, I believe bulk is holding or pulled out of his uh, vest. It legit is just like it looks like a couple socks wrapped up with some vampire teeth. Yeah, they gotta do is what yeah. they gotta do. Yeah, <laughs> so Saban is a cheap bastard. <laughs> Yeah, like and not even like yeah. good vampire teeth, like the plastic Dracula vampire teeth you get at like Value Village, like the five, like the the one you would you don't slam Value for Village like twenty. Value Village, Did, I didn't slam it, but I'm not saying it's good vampire it's teeth like, either. It's like the shitty glow in the dark vampire teeth you could get for like ten tickets at a Chuck E. Cheese. Yeah, very true. Or, or the dollar, it gets the dollar store ones. Yeah, yeah. Also that, yeah. So we get one of Skull's best lines. He's Don't like, stop for me, Bulk! Save yourself! I'm pretty sure Skull Skull is like holding on to Bulk's ankle as well in this scene, like like Dixie holding on to Hulk's leg. Oh yeah, that <laughs> the Skull gets up. <laughs> they go to Don't leave me. Oh, oh my god. Don't, Don't leave, leave me. me. <laughs> oh Jesus. Dixie Carter. Uh, oh, so Skull and Bulk go to How the did tree. you have to bring her up? Come yeah, on. very true. So then we get the forming of the Mega Wait, Cannon, or sorry. whatever it's called. Wait, before that, Skull and Bulk are on a tree, and they're taking the flowers off them. They see their sharp teeth, and they start yelling. And Bulk, uh, Skull's still wearing his glasses, sunglasses, for no reason. Yeah. We come back to Command Center, and, and Gordon's still talking to them, and it's like, uh, Tommy, you suck. you got to stay back. There's uh, no footage of you, so stay back. And Tommy's like, oh, okay. Did you hear that Barai died? <laughs> Tommy, Fox can't afford more footage for you from Japan. You're going to have to ha hold this one back. Yeah, you have to wait until Doomsday 2 after when we can show more of you and in Season 2. <laughs> but for now, stay back here. Uh, so the Rangers go we, back. We've still got another, like, 12 to 14 episodes to go. Wait. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just stay there. Do your side quest. 
Do your side quest and, for now. And eventually, maybe you'll also get a shield that isn't bloody felt. And you'll change <laughs> colors. Fabric. And be replaced with Jason as leader. And he'll be happy about no, it. No, I prefer a bloody one made of clay. So they combine their weapons. They do the power cannon. They blast a, a the spit flower. No Megazord fight. Cut back to a fan center. Alpha and Tommy are just standing there. It's like, hey, they did a good job. And Tommy's going like, God damn it, I wish I was in there. But hey, Alpha, can you help me uh, fix this float so I can get some with Kim? He goes like, sure. So they cut back to the garage and Tommy's like asking Alpha, it's like, give me the pliers. And Alpha goes like, this one? No, that one. This oh, one? Oh yeah, because no. he doesn't know what tools are. Yeah, he's a robot. And Tommy goes like, damn it, Alpha, you're yeah. too much. He's supposed to be a, a supercomputer. Yes. How does he not know what pliers are? This is why I put in Alpha as a himbo, because he's a, clearly a robot that has infinite, like, really large amounts of knowledge, but doesn't know what basic tools are. Yes, he only okay. knows the power that's Andrew, that's, okay, that's why he's a himbo there. Yeah. Yeah, that's why I put that there. <laughs> so, uh, come back to Rita's moon base. She's mad at her group, saying, like, oh, you guys suck. I need better people. We come back True. to... Yeah. We come back to the then... youth center. Sorry, go ahead. After the Rita wrap up, we do get yeah at at, at the youth center. We we get a shot of just fucking Billy. Boy, if you don't, get yeah, no, Billy doing amazing. Like, because they everyone is get, getting getting up together at the juice bar to watch the parade, and Billy's right in the front. He's got fucking a bowl of popcorn and binoculars, and he's using the binoculars to look at the TV. Ernie's you. like. Are a door. He, Ernie Ernie is, is like, why do you have those binoculars? And then Billy's like, oh, it makes me feel like I'm there. Billy is a true G. He's a true G. Billy's a legend. Yeah. Confirmed. He is a true dumbass. <laughs> and oh, what, yeah. he he's just he's an unfiltered he's unfiltered and he's just himself. That's why he gets all the bitches. Yeah. He's, he's, why every, he's what everyone uh should try to be in life yes that's why his body counts already at three two, yeah isn't it he, it's at two yeah he's, marge, he's, only gotten, at three. Marge, he's only gotten marge he's only gotten marge and femme billy so right now yeah marge and femme billy are we counting punk kimberly no no they did not have sex <laughs> yeah. never got her yeah so, so really it was all about skull anyway yeah so, so then, um, Tommy a- after we get a shot of the repair, I, I got to mention this briefly. After the repaired float, how the hell did Tommy repair this uh, apparently small looking float, apparently for a teenage, like, high school thing, which it, it looked decently sized for like a high school or like a small town parade. But then you cut to like the footage and it's like, yeah, this high school parade made by the student Kimberly and I can't remember the rest of her Kimberly name. No, Kimberly Hart. They were, Kimberly building, Hart. they were building the models that the, that the professionals that would make. The professionals build the... Ah, okay. Uh, yeah, okay. Just, I, I missed Kimberly that. Kimberly said detail. that Kimberly said that the de- deadline for submitting the model was today. Oh, okay, yeah. So her model becomes real, and she goes like, "Is that my float?" And so like Tommy, everyone's like, "Surprise, bitch!" Yeah, right, that, that, that that makes more sense. That 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 is my B. And she asks, "How is yeah. this how possible?" And Tommy goes like, "Eh, the power of the boner, girl." And she hugs him, and he <laughs> the looks power in of the, my oh, dick. Yeah, and he looks in the camera and goes, has a smile like Zach Morris does in every episode. Yeah, yeah, and then Bulk and Skull come back in. Bulk and Skull are covered in bandages. Yeah, and uh. it's, it's great. Yeah, so they they show up, and Zach is going to be the one that deters them this time. And he he says, "The hand is quicker than the eye," and he makes flowers appear out of nowhere. And then, my favorite part of the scene. He starts waving the flowers at them because now apparently they both have allergies and Bulk just starts to like back up and kind of run away-ish. But Skull holds up his fingers like a cross. Oh yeah, he, he did. I forgot about He's that. He's like the power of Christ compels you. <laughs> <laughs> 
So no and then he, he slowly plans to kill Angela. Probably <laughs> this is when he slowly plans to kill Angela, this like after her last appearance. Plot to kill Angela begins. Yeah, like uh, I'll get you by getting your girl. Yeah. Oh my god. Oh, so, so now we move on to season one, episode twenty-five. Life's a zero one zero masquerade. Zero one zero. <laughs> that that's that's a joke that only Malcolm and I get. Uh, uh, Lou Pat says hi. Okay. Oh, uh, I haven't seen Lou Pat yet. It it's it's the it's the cops versus robbers Sentai. <laughs> Oh, that one, right, right. That's a L- 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 Lupin Ranger versus Pat Ranger. Yeah, that's a season. By the way, I have to say, would have been adapted to Power Rangers. Honestly, really interestingly, if they d- yeah. ever decided to I do it, I would love to see two teams going up against each other in a Power Rangers setting. Setting, like basically, imagine if you had a team of like. Episode one version of Jack and Z from SPD. Like if those two from the beginning of the the series of SPD led their own team versus a team of all sky. Speaking of team versus team, Dino Thunder, when Disney had the rights to this, so somebody had the idea to bring in Jason David Frank and Austin St. John to reprise their roles and have Jason have his one team and, Tommy to have his team and they go against each other and that would have been the whole season. But they didn't go with it and just went with Dino Thunder. Can you imagine if they actually did that? That would have been cool. a crazy that would have been a crazy thing that a lot of people will love except for Austin St. John. <laughs> yeah. Well, they have worked together after, but yeah, there is beef in there, yeah. Could you imagine the con appearances? Yeah, you know, so Dino Thunder, uh, you know, it was it was a thing, but you know that that fucking cunt. <laughs> oh my god! Okay, so next episode, life. What is a oh. masquerade? Life's a masquerade. Yeah, life's a life's a masquerade. <laughs> We're gonna thirtieth, nineteen ninety three. Sorry, one day what? before Halloween. All I know is Austin yes. got mad at me for having a Green Ranger wallet. Yeah. So that 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 feud still isn't dead. <laughs> yeah. Well. <laughs> Yeah, very true. But anyway, the, yeah. the, the, the continue. So October 30th, 93 was when it aired. And it was written by Cheryl Saban and directed by Robert Hughes. Mm, Robert Hughes I've, again. It makes sense that Cheryl Saban wrote this because it has another major advancement in Rita's arc. Mm-hmm. So we open at the, at the youth center and we, it, it, there's a costume party getting ready. We're getting ready for a Halloween-ish costume party. I don't know if it's specifically Halloween branded, but it's definitely. Uh, a yep, party. Halloween because uh, the the episode aired uh, the All Hallows Eve or Mischief Night. So yeah, they're at the costume party and everyone's getting stuff set up uh, except for Bulk and Skull. It's like, oh, we don't want to do any of the work, so we're gonna sneak out. Kimberly sees them sneaking out and says, "Hey, thanks for all the help, Bulk and Skull." And Bulk and Skulls are they're distracted by this. And then Ernie takes the advantage and says, hey, <laughs> staple these up, fuckos. <laughs> and it throws him a bunch of, like, uh, you know, tinsel. Skull is having trouble with the stapler because the stapler just isn't working. And he's just pushing the stapler into his head like he's some crazy deathmatch wrestler. He's Necro Butcher. He's John he's like Necro Butcher. John oh, he Moss. becomes Necro Butcher. That's where it all started. Yeah, that's where his bloodlust began. He's Necro John, Butcher. John Moxley is just a Jack ne- Necro Butcher, so. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we get some fun shenanigans with uh, a Rube Goldberg-esque set of things where Bulk knocks over a chair, and that knocks over a few more chairs, which knocks over a stick, which uh, knocks over a paint can that's balanced on a... Uh, on a ladder and that catapults the white bucket of like white paint onto bulk yeah which after he wipes his head makes him look perfectly like bomber man yep (laughs) like bomber man and also we get our second appearance of uh, angela Angela. ah but it was a short scene so it's all good favorite person yeah zach you can better (laughs) 
<laughs> and Zach is obviously macking up on her, trying to get get some, as it were. Mm-hmm. And Angela is just having none of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so like, does he ask her like, "Are you going to the dance?" Or does she? What do you say? I I I think he was just like, "Hey, uh, Angela, you know, do you, you need do you need some help with this, or did you want to have some help with the with your costume later?" And then Angela just walks away. Yeah, the cold heartedness <laughs> begins. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of cold heartedness later. Yeah. Uh, then we cut to Bandora Castle, and uh, Rita is talking to uh, Finster and her her group about Super Putty. Oh, the debut of the and Super And how they have found a, a sustainable source of Super Putty to make Super Putties. Oh, no, sorry, not the debut of Super Putty. They mentioned the Super Putty. My bad. Yeah, they mentioned the Super Putty, which is the putty that is used to make Super Putties. Yes. I did. I know it sounds weird, but like, bruh. Yeah, Super Putty to make Super Putties, yes. And in order to distract the Power Rangers from her mining operation... Uh, she requests Finster to make a monster, and Finster says, "Oh, I'll create the ghastliest, most horrifying, terrifying monster in my repertoire." And then he hits the monster matic, and we get a huge build up to the scariest, most absolutely unimaginable monster of the week. It's yeah, Frankenstein. It, it, it's yeah. just it's just Frankenstein. Yes, Frankenstein monster. <laughs> So they've really been going for, I'll say Zhu Ranger has really been going for like, we're going to theme a bunch of stuff around m- 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 mystical creatures of history and fables and whatnot, and, except for the party. F- and um, and so Frankenstein for me is turkey. a perfect modern ah. example of that. Yeah, the yeah I guess fair point, but also like just fuck the turkey. Yeah. Also played by Tom uh, Weiner, so he's uh, Frankenweiner. Yeah, the Fra- the Frankenstein is also voiced by the man, the myth, the legend, Tom Weiner. I also forgot to mention in Itsy Bitsy Spider that the Spider-Tron is also voiced by Tom Weiner. Okay. <laughs> so we get the Frankenweiner in this one. Frankenweiner, exactly. Uh, <laughs> then we cut back to, I believe it's Billy's house, and they're leaving Billy's house. And the main five are all in costume now, so we have... Uh, from left to right, we have Billy in his Sherlock Holmes outfit, which is actually like pretty spot on. Uh, we have Trini in Pocahontas, <laughs> a, a, a Pocahontas slash Sacagawea costume, like very Native American lady. Mm-hmm. Uh, I love then that you we... Sacagawea. Nice. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I don't. I think of Sacagawea before I think of Pocahontas personally. Yeah, Sacagawea as uh, well. Yeah. I was thinking of Tiger Lily. Ty, uh, that's a that's another one. That's another good one, actually. Especially with J- Jason dressed as Robin Hood or, or uh, P- P- Peter Pan. No, no, he he's Robin Hood. He's Robin Hood. That's not he Peter Robin. Pan. He's he's Robin Where's Hood. his bow and arrow? He's Rob. He's supposed to be Robin Hood men in tights. He yeah. just doesn't have a bow and arrow because that's Kimberly's thing. Yes. Speaking of Kimberly, uh, I forget what Kimberly is she's dressed a, she's as. A princess. Maid Marion. Oh no, she's yeah, she's she's basically Maid Marian, I guess. Oh, princess, because she's a valley girl, so yeah. she's a princess in, in pink dress. So it, it, oh. it's basically Maid Marian. So Jason and Kim did a couple's costume, probably. Yeah, I oh, mean, this is, just, this is just to set up the true OTP who did an actual couple's costume, Bulk and Skull. Yeah, I will say, yeah, that this complete subject will be completely forgotten with this amazing edit of Bulk being serviced by Skull. <laughs> Service by Skull. No. What? Don't, don't, no. Oh, don't no. you remember? He's like using the shake weight belt thing oh, and it looks like he's. Yeah, I'm yeah. not even done with the main cast costume yet. You're forgetting the black guy. <laughs> yeah, Zach, Zach, Zach is dressed as King Tut. Yeah. And he's got his whole chest out. Yes. I, I'm i sorry. I've been thinking about that for the past seven minutes since checking my notes, and I've just been <laughs> silently laughing to myself waiting. <laughs> yeah. So now we cut to Bulk and Skull house, I guess? Yeah. Because this is the first time we've ever seen Bulk and Skull in a building that isn't, like, publicly owned or Billy's. Right, right. So I assume this is Bulk and Skull's house. And, or yeah. Bulk or Skull. Oh, yeah. I actually <laughs> had I, – I, I have it noted here – Food on walls, so bulk's room. Like, yeah, okay, fair enough. It. And it's like, that's a, makes that's actually and he's, that's a that good makes note. Sense. And the walls are purple, and he's wearing a purple shirt. Yeah, also a very good note. <laughs> uh, 
So Bulk is getting jerked off. Oh, every day, every, every day when Bulk changes his shirt, he repaints his walls. Is that what you're saying? I guess. <laughs> I guess. So oh, my God. Uh, but yeah, Bulk. It, it definitely like at the beginning of the scene, they just show Bulk from the chest up, and he's vibrating and like talking about how good Skull is doing. So <laughs> it definitely is just it. It it's sus. It's sus as fuck. But then yeah. we cut away. The the like stomach vibrating thing that is in like in in gyms and uh, skulls in the back in looking through a trunk of costumes, and then we get a few of the couple's costume the ideas. Montage. Where uh, for, 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 first off, uh, we have Skull as Captain Hook and Bulk as Peter Pan, <laughs> and <laughs> Bulk is like, I am not going anywhere in tight green tights. <laughs> Oh, and this is the first time we see Bulk with his natural hair because usually it's always covered up on a ponytail. Long hair. Yeah, this is the first time you see him with his long hair. That is that is also a true point. So they they forget about that, and then the second costume is oh fuck, what was it? The donkey, the horse. Oh yeah, the pantomime horse. Yeah. And then they they break it up, and Bulk is like, no, 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 I will not. Be the one in the back. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no way. There is no way that I'm going to be the back end. I gotta say, I do love uh, the idea of a group costume for Bulk and Skull just being two different versions of Elvis. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, that, that one, was yeah. that was the pit pinnacle of this scene because. Skull is young Elvis, Bulk is old Elvis, and I don't know if they did their research, but they're like doing the exact mannerisms of young and old Elvis oh, respectfully. These guys do their these guys do their homework really well because Skull's a lot more mobile and does some kicks. Bulk is like doing the a lot more, you know, limited. Yeah. Obviously, because he's obviously bigger. Uh Skull kicks Bulk in the back and he's like, Oh, oh mama, my back. And my then back. falls. <laughs> and then we and pan to the, the yeah then we pan to the window in the back and frank and weiner's just been watching them what uh what made you come on over here tonight yeah, he to yeah frank and weiner is a goddamn perv dude like <laughs> you don't creep on teenagers like that yeah like especially yeah, bulk and skull i don't know if bulk and skull even count as tea. i feel like they're adults that just got held back like years upon years did they ever graduate because like, i'm not it's like, sure it's did. like peter griffin only being able to like uh only being only still being in the third grade in one episode of family guy yeah or uh homer never graduating high school here's the thing about Bulk and skull like i don't think they ever uh, mentioned that they ever graduated high school i just don't know if they actually graduated yeah no, that's I, true i think they were part I of the graduation there's... ceremony and no, I, assume, maybe... I assume skull did because he he's running a high-powered company in samurai so you would assume he did get an education yeah, didn't they become cops school. later i think yeah. you need to have a high school diploma uh, in order junior to become police a cop. patrol no they, they were... were junior cops yeah oh, okay junior police and then patrol. they became private investigators the jury's out on bulk but skull definitely would have needed one Right. Uh, so we cut to the, the the youth center, and the party is in full swing. And uh, we get, I try to take a look at some of the costumes, but the editing is just too raucous, and uh, it's got that Jason Freddy versus Jason thing where it just like slows down the footage mm -hmm. and sh tries to show off all the weird dancing. Uh, I, I did pull pull a few costumes. There's a, there's a bee. There's a, there's an Uncle Sam looking guy. There's a skeleton. Uh, and then uh, Bulk and Skull show up, and they're not dressed as Elvis. They're dressed as punks. They're dressed as which themselves. Up, yeah. Which is basically and, and, just their everyday clothes. Yes. Yeah, and Skull says, I can't believe that was a great idea of you getting us to dress up as punks for this. And it's like, bruh, the Elvis costumes were perfect. Yes, yes. And Ernie <laughs> yeah. is dressed as Count Dracula. <laughs> Yeah, and he and he tells Kimberly, "I want to suck your blood," which is just what the fuck, Ernie. And it goes like, "Hey, Ernie." It's like, "How'd you know it was me?" Um, Ernie's now Ernie's a perv. Jeez. Yeah, <laughs> everyone's a pervert apparently. Uh, and then uh, uh, I believe Alpha comes in. <laughs> Trini and Kimberly's jaws just drop. 
Billy walks over and is like, Alpha, you really should not be here right now. And then Alpha's like, well, I wanted to party with you guys, and I felt like right now would be a perfect opportunity. Billy says, oh, well, I mean, you do have a pretty good costume. Then Alpha says, what costume? <laughs> and just walked away. Yeah, god damn it, Alpha. And after so Billy we and got Alpha incredibly walked. lucky because Alpha legit almost ousted the rain. He broke the first rule. Yes. I'm pretty sure Zordon okayed it. Wait, no, hold on. The first rule is never use powers for personal gain. Yes. Yeah. It's the third rule is uh, never never expose your identity. Either way, Alpha, you're being very you're being way too reckless. Yes. (laughs) Oh my god. Alpha still hasn't recovered from the events of Green with Evil. Yeah, he really has. He really hasn't. Uh, then we uh then also Frankenstein comes in. Sorry, Frankenweiner comes in. Uh and is now hanging out with the ch- with the teenagers in the dancing. Uh is looking around for those pesky Power Rangers. And their uh, little dog too. <laughs> Could you imagine if there was a dog? That would be pretty fucking funny, honestly. Yeah. Power Ranger dog. Yeah. <laughs> and uh we get some shenanigans in the uh, in the party. I'm, I believe. Oh wait, no. We also get a shot in the uh, in the cave, uh, in in a cave. Uh, them mining out the super putty and getting it ready for Rita. Uh, then we cut back and uh, we cut back and Alpha is just getting fielded on by like three clearly adult women. <laughs> yeah, they are. It's like clearly adult. Yes, they are There's all Alpha over. already increasing his personal body count to oh, to Billy's and even further. <laughs> I, I I believe one of the women is like, I just love the way he talks, and then Alpha's like, hey, thank you. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And Zach's like saying, like, like, how does he okay. get all the women? Yeah, and I'm just like in my notes, why can't I be like Alpha? With my six pack uh, showing, and Angela's not giving me shit. <laughs> yeah, uh, Zach. Sh- yeah, Zach is tries to roll up on Angela and is like, "Hey, wh- how about we dance, baby?" And then uh, Angela is just like, uh, uh, "Go back to your tomb, tut." Yeah, damn that. Angela. And just walks away cold as ice again. Yeah. You're as cold as ice. She is. This man, like Zach, is now a creep because he doesn't know what no means anymore. He's yeah, now he's just, he's just trying to push the feet, push the 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 thing. Uh, yes. And now we get uh, Frankenstein almost uh, goes after, I believe it's Jason and Kimberly. And Jason <laughs> luckily, Zach. there's some random woman in the crowd that's dressed like the bride of Frankenstein who grabs her, grabs Frankenweiner, and says, "Come on, Frankie, they're playing our song," and then pulls him into the pulls him into the center of the dance floor. <laughs> they do what is loosely described as a couple's dance, <laughs> He's trying which to kill is mostly her. just him trying to reach out and attack her while she dodges. Yeah. For a brief second, I really wanted uh, when you said, come on, Frankie, I was like, come on, Frankie, show us your favorite pose. <laughs> Almighty is going to hit you with his favorite pose. What do hey? No. Come on, Frankie. He just bends <laughs> over. Oh, Jesus. Okay. God damn you, Bobby Lashley. <laughs> oh, oh, my God. So, it's the Frankenstein, because he's stitched together, just falls in half. <laughs> yeah, God damn it. Falls off. Uh, then uh, the dance is interrupted by Skull shooting Franken's, Frankenweiner with, with like a plunger gun. Well, Frankenweiner froze, yeets the girl into Bulk and Skull, and then he shoots yeah. a gun. And then Skull, he picks up Skull in a chokehold like he's Mr. X in Resident Evil 2. <laughs> Skull's like, come on, this was just a joke, man. Can't you take a joke? And they cut down to him, his legs, and they make play a dumb sound effect when he's wiggling his legs. <laughs> Yes, yes. Yeah, then then he throws Skull into Bulk. Says, this guy can't take a joke. And then the guy starts running after Bulk and Skull out of the uh, out, out of the youth center, causing a bit of a ruckus. Billy notices this and then walks away. And I, I pointed it out 
and I know it doesn't really look like her, but I swear that the girl on the left of this scene as Billy leaves is just Marge in a mask. I don't see it, but I'll put it up there. I yes. I thought it was at first. I, I don't think so, but... It definitely isn't the same voice. It definitely isn't the same actor, but that's my headcanon now. Ah, okay. All right. Uh, In your then, headcanon. Then we, then, we, then we cut outside the youth center, and Bulk and Skull are running away. Then they both break off and run in a different direction. Uh, which proves that Bulk and Skull did not go to the Prometheus school of running away from things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's very true. Uh, Frankenstein or Frankenweiner comes out and looks one way, the way that Bulk ran, then looks at the way that Skull ran and just starts walking forward. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> because he's an undead monster that has no brain. Yes, very true. Uh, then Billy, Billy is following him and we get uh, Metal Gear Billy. Uh, Basically, it's just that that mini game from Spyro Two where you're hiding from the big, tall, himbo dick. You're just hiding behind trees uh, while he's like leading you to his secret hideout. Right. Uh, but it's just yeah. Frankenstein Frankenweiner turns around and tries to see Billy. Uh, Billy's hiding behind the trees, and then he just turns around and keeps walking again. Uh, and we eventually end up at the Death Girl Cave. <laughs> From episode yeah. five, where's and, the net? And I'll, and where Uncle Howard was captured as well. Yeah. Well, no, no. Yeah. He he's just in hiding. He was the one that got away. Yeah. yeah. He was the one that got away. God damn it. Because uh, he had the invisibility formula, so oh, he could yeah. hide. The one that got away. <laughs> Yeah, so they sneak into the cave, and this is also apparently the cave where the super putty is. Uh, they start mining the, putty. yeah, they they start mine, they keep mining the super putty. Uh, Rita's there, and uh, <laughs> out of nowhere, uh, Frankenstein's design changes because it's the change between the Power Rangers design and the Sentai design because the Sentai design has red eyes. Mm -hmm. So as if it weren't easier to tell, it, it's really easy to tell when it's Sentai footage now in this episode. Yes, it is. Uh, and Billy says yeah. the best line ever when he morphs. It's time for molecular transmutation. And then he transforms and uh, is, we get uh, Frankenweiner's gimmick, like his weapon, which is he pulls the bolts out of his neck and uses them like nunchucks, which is actually a really cool weapon design. <laughs> Uh, the, the Rangers all get warped to the command center after uh, Billy mentions that, oh, this must be Rita's doing. So we're at command center. <laughs> everyone is everyone is there in their costumes. And Jason's like, oh, hey, Zodan, dude, what's going on? <laughs> <laughs> Zordon explains that uh, the super the super drown you with your own tears. <laughs> <laughs> the, the super putties. Uh, the, the super putty has caused an earthquake, and uh, the Franken Frankenweiner is, uh, you know, wreaking havoc. And we get a shot of Alpha's spinning head that I really thought was disembodied for a second. Yeah, same, same. And it was like it's just a spinning head, and his screw is so black, and the background is black, so it's hard to tell. Uh, then. <laughs> Yeah, we get a shot of Rita in in the main city uh, with her enlarged, uh, engorged Frankenweiner. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck's sake. Yeah. Why did I write that? Why the fuck did I write I that? I don't know. Uh, and uh, she's floating on what can be generously described as meat wad from aqua teen hunger force uh we get a bit of morphing we get a bit of uh we, we get the megazord sequence pretty quick because the the frankenstein frankenweiner is large now uh, we get some fighting with uh his his, this his is eyes are that red he, now i mentioned that earlier that yes. his eyes became red yeah I, red. it's like it's even more noticeable when he's even bigger though Oh, yeah, yeah, they're red in the Sentai version. Uh, so, <laughs> also his weapon changes because instead of it being nunchucks, it's now one bolt and also like a a, a cannonball. So it's like a ball and chain. Uh, he Real wraps the ball, ball and, and chain, chain around the around the Zord's neck and makes the Zord fall down onto the ground. Uh, 
<laughs> kicks kicks the Zord, and then we cut later after Tommy has been uh, informed that they need his help, and Tommy uh, leaves the side quest. And uh, oh, I forget, Tommy has a little putty fight in front of the youth center, and that's uh, there's really nothing to bring up about that. It's just pretty basic Tommy fight. Yep. A lot of ooya, a lot of punches, a lot of kicks. It's not so, ooh yeah, it's ah uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. It's yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, Tommy, you gotta work on your pronunciation. To Tommy morphs and gets into the into the fight. I don't think he summons the dragon zord quite yet. Uh yeah, no, he doesn't summon summon the zord, the dragon zord quite yet. Because there's a bit more of the megazord being pummeled on. Uh he he kicks the Megazord into a building and the, the Zord flops in belly flops into the building and I put in my notes casualty 78. Dead <laughs> and then then the, the Dragon Zord gets into the fight and we get uh a double whammy uh of uh references because one he's he grabs the Dragon Zord by the tail, swings it and we get a bit of a giant swing with Tyson Kidd moment where he knocks the swing E into into the he knocks the Dragon Zord, which he's swinging into the Megazord and it falls over. So it's a bit of Cesaro Tyson Kidd. Okay. And then he also goes full Mario from Mario 64 and swings him until he like throws him. So so long, you Dragon Zord. <laughs> so long, you Dragon Zord. Hello. He we also get uh, Frank and Frankenweiner hitting the two Zords with his stinky breath attack. Oh, it's yeah. It's just bright red, bright red breath that makes the, all the all the Rangers cough inside and like fries uh, their, their circuits a bit. Uh, then we get the finish, which is uh, they realize they have to put the Dragon Zord in fighting mode. So we get the reverse the footage where they were reverse the last little bit of the zord transformation <laughs> and then we get the dragon zord in fighting mode we get the dragon spear and uh we get them killing <laughs> killing frankenweiner with a drill hole to the chest in the most, uh, which like looks even more graphic than usual because yeah, it, it looks more human than usual yeah, it's it a looks human so and not a spider yes we uh frankenweiner dies which is going to be very funny considering what happens in the next episode. <laughs> uh, and then we get the 11th. I have a headache in this episode. Mm -hmm. And then we get to the, uh, the, the wrap up, which is we're back at the costume party. Uh, everyone's back in costume, except for Tommy, everyone's back. And it's like, Oh, they're going to announce who the, uh, who won the prize for best costume here pretty quick. Oh, by the way, Tommy, where's your costume? And then we get this, this weird scene where Tommy's like, oh, I have it in my bag. And then he says one minute. And as he says one minute, he shoves his finger, the, the finger pointed one in Kimberly's face. Like he's nagging her again. <laughs> my God. <laughs> yeah. And then says, I'll be right back. And then he leaves. Bulk and Skull show back up and they're about to like, you know, Oh yeah, they they all show up to Alpha, and Alpha still got ladies rubbing up on him. Mm -hmm. Alpha is <laughs> everyone, a dog. Alpha is a player. Bulk and Skull show up and is like, "Oh, you're not anything that important or amazing." Tin can, and <laughs> just a bit of bullying from them. And then Frankenweiner comes back from the grave, sneaks up behind the Rangers. Bulk and Skull Skull gets scared and start backing up, and then he takes his head off, and it's Tommy. So Tommy had a Frankenweiner costume. You dick! What perfect yeah, what timing, Tommy. What a dick again. Uh, <laughs> Ernie then comes out and has a blue ribbon. And is like, oh, we're going to award who had the best costume. And the award goes to whoever the hell you are. And <laughs> puts it on Alpha. So Alpha wins. Pussy. Yeah, because he literally runs out and the women start chasing him. Yeah. And, and like, this is Bulk Bul Bul and Skull are like, uh, I wonder who this guy is. Skull, give me a can opener. <laughs> that episode was a tour de force. <laughs> right. Yeah, but we, we are now on the final episode of The Batch. Episode 26, season one, Gung Ho. A very important episode for a very important Malcolm. For a very important yes. Malcolm. 
this was um this in the float episode where i think part of like a disney xd block um where basically it it, it was the first of appear- first appearance of a certain white dinosaur we'll see later so it starts out with the team ninja finals like one of the first many ninja finals that they do in this goddamn city <laughs> the team ninja finals it's a stupid fucking ninja tournament yeah. here we go yeah. um ooh, ooh okay the, the the air date october 25th 1993 so this was huh wait so this, this air before, before masquerade well like i said which is cause... stupid because masquerade is technically the part one yeah maybe the, I, oh wait i i think that's what andre and andreas were talking about b- before yes yeah. and like when it first came out this came first and then masquerade later because they're acting like they never heard of the sewer putties in the next episode but uh, it, IMDb, yeah. we're going with the it, IMDb, uh, we're going with the yeah, YouTube one. That's, yeah, that's weird. That is really weird. Anyway, Team Ninja Finals. Yeah. So, um, oh yeah, we get, uh, so the, yeah, this episode aired October 25th, 1993, and it was written by Mark Hoffmeyer and directed by Robert Hughes. It opens up in the Team Ninja Finals, or the training of which, with, uh, Jason and Tommy just being absolute dicks to each other. It's almost like the they prelude. didn't. It's almost like they actually hate each other. The prelude to the hatred. Yes. Do you think this is why this episode felt like they had the most natural on screen chemistry because they were beating the shit out of each other? Oh, there's a different episode <laughs> yeah. where there's a different episode where like uh, I think it's Lord Zed puts a spell on them and they absolutely hate each other and they're not acting. <laughs> Yeah, they're just for reals. And it goes on like this for like two or three more minutes of just them training and just being like, hey, yeah, you think that's good? Here, I can beat the shit out of you even harder than you can do to me. And it it, it, it leads into other fighting styles, like the whole Q-tip fighting, like we're American Gladiators and uh, the kendo sticks, like we're Sandman. It. It's like putting Shigo and Kim Possible into a room together. They will not not fight each other. We get Bulk and Skull showing up. Uh, Bulk looking like a straight up pimp. I, I have in my notes here. Why is he dressed like a pimp? Or is this just his idea of what rich people look like? <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing. Uh, that's amore. <laughs> oh, Bulk shows up, and Skull is with him, and he's dressed up like a ref, but he's like a ref with a tank top and a headband, and these not the same Bret Hart sunglasses, different sunglasses. So all I had in my notes is he looks like the big motherfucking rigs. Oh my god. <laughs> And also, they have uh, Jason and Tommy's opponents for the Team Ninja Finals, which are just Akira Tozawa's ninjas. <laughs> very true. Very, very true. I am so thankful that I was, like, asleep through that era of WWE. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, same. Oh, we got same. the best line by Zack, though, because uh, the ninjas, the mass ninjas are doing well. And... They're Zach. doing their 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 thing, and they're going they're going all over the place. And Billy says, "Oh, their teamwork is definitely proficient." Yeah, and they're good. Man, I could. Tell you. Zach, what no, the man. fuck? <laughs> this is why Angela doesn't fucking love you. <laughs> <laughs> so after uh, another fight with so, so after another pratfall done by Skull, we get um for some reason the still life Frankenstein's monster in the background. Yeah, why is Frankenweiner there? I don't know. Why was there a Japanese kid in what in the tickle sneezer episode? I believe it's because they uh, messed around with like a recycled four parter from uh, Zhu Ranger. Yeah. Yeah, that's definitely what it is. But yeah. And then uh, I, I think there was something specific also I wanted to call out here. Hold on. Um, oh, yeah. The fact that it looked like once again they were taking chunks out of Meat Wad to make more super putties. 
it looked like they were just putties. making the super putties out of shit. Yeah, they're still <laughs> making them super putties. And finally, we get the debut of the super putties when they go attack Kim and Trini. And who are just who are just putties, but with big hands. Big hands. Wow. <laughs> Which reminds me of the John Cena SNL sketch where he was Trump or like uh he he he's what Trump sees through his eyes and he uh, imagines himself as John Cena with hands the size of super putties. Yes. <laughs> like the fucking what, foam hands. What a letdown yeah, exactly. super putties. Yeah. If you oh, think that's almost letdown. like Hulk hands the size of Arkansas. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Trini and Kimberly fight the super putties for a little bit and then uh Trini gets hit by a tire swing, which I put in my notes as oh Trini's a bit tired. Get the fuck out of here. Go to the corner. <laughs> go, go to the skull corner. Go to the skull corner. <laughs> go to the fucking skull corner, you son of a bitch. <laughs> uh, uh, so, yeah. Fucking, yeah. Uh, I, have to, we... I, I, I think we need to create a pun jar, and every time we say a pun, we need to put a dollar in it, so that way we can actually have a financial plan for our podcast. Yeah, agreed. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> uh, that thing would get full real fast. <laughs> <laughs> we get uh, Trini and Kimberly saying, oh, we can't finish these guys. We need the rest of our friends, and because then we get the playground fights. We can't do we it the... with your big hands. Yeah, and then we get the playground fight, which is based. But it's a good Blow kind of fight that they all show their abilities. And after the putties lose, you just hear one of them talk to themselves. They looked like big, strong hands. <laughs> get your motor running. Get out the highway. The rock fighter. Uh, don't get me started. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey, at least that's a good rock biter. Yeah, very... I'm also just thankful this fight has editing that doesn't give me a migraine. Very, very. True. Yeah. There's there's a bit where I believe it's uh Zach kicks a uh, super putty over a bar and then he slides down the slide. Yeah! Yeah! How many parks favorite. in California do you think they went through before they ran out of parks? Uh, they just do one park all the time. You sure? Because I'm pretty sure they, they had to rotate a few parks. I'm pretty sure they went through at least a few parks. Now, the super putties are Defeated, unbeatable. Unbeatable. Indestructible. Remember that line? Indestructible, my ass. Indestructible. You are my density. I mean, destiny. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> hey, guys, it's to... really, it's, it, it's super easy to talk. It's no fucking rocket appliances. Yeah. <laughs> so Zorlon calls into the command center and sends yeah. Jason and Tommy on a side quest to learn to how to look teach. for uh, to learn the value um, of teamwork. Yeah, to learn the value of teamwork. And we were wondering during the episode, and I just haven't noted here. Um, they uh, learn the value of teamwork and look for the new weapons they needed to defeat them. And I actually looked it up here and. Uh, because we were curious about what they were called in the show because either we misheard or because they were they just never mentioned labeled. They never mentioned New it. Ranger. The yeah. Thunder Slingers. Ah, they're the Thunder the Slingers. Thunder Slingers. All right. Good. It's a, it's a shame right. they didn't name it on the show, not once. Yeah, they didn't bring it up. They just, the, the, the whole bit was that Jason and Tommy had to learn the real superpower of teamwork. Even though there was an episode called Teamwork. Well, Tommy wasn't there. Very true. And uh, we, we get the first fight with the super putties, and of course, it's pretty standard stuff. And then we had um, it gets split into two. If like you destroy one, you just... yeah, there's some claymation because like you defeat one, and they get split into two, and it's claymation. Yeah, yeah, maybe that's what makes them even stronger is the fact that they just can't go down. Yeah, Eventually, and they make maybe. more. It's like a hydra. Yes. Oh god, a hydro buddy. So Tommy uh, but... and Jason are up doing their side quest and they find a rock. Mm -hmm. It was a big rock. I, I think we also need to have put a dollar in the jar every time we make a fucking killer croc reference. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So Alpha's like saying, Zora, I don't think these two can get along. Zora goes like, Oh, they will. They definitely will. 
You just have to wait for teamwork. Yeah. Also, I have an old Be friend. Be patient, you bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I also, um, in, in my notes here, I have uh, for something partic- uh, in particular with the super putties. Uh, didn't notice before that uh, the super putties, well, one of them or a few of them had sword hands. Yeah, there, there's the oh, super yeah. putties because they have big hands or sword hands. It's like, I wish that we saw that more often. Like, I see the giant hands that, or, like, a boulder hand where it's, like, like a clubbing hand. But yeah. it's, sword hand can actually do some see, damage. You don't see the sword hands often, no. Mm-hmm. It's like, blunt force trauma is always fun to give to people, but their stabbing is just as effective. It's very effective. And now that they're at, like, almost up the hill now, we get... The shot of the little shrine where the thunder slingers are, yeah, and it's just got all of all of the dinosaurs on there. And then it happens. We get the reveal and the debut of the of first Titanus, of the first carrier zord. And no, he's not. He's not a carrier zord. Yeah, he is. Wait, what? He's a carrier zord. He carries. He carrier. The rest oh, of- yeah, yeah. And my bad. Yeah, he is a carrier zord. The first carrier zord. Zord. Carrier Zord. He there's certain Zords that kind of slump into subgenres. Like there's Titanus, Tor, who is the very the Carrier Zord is sort of one of them. Where all they basically do is their back opens up, or they have like a weapon attack, and you just slap the fucking rest of the Megazord yeah. in the middle of them. Um, yeah, example, Minus, um, or the Thunder the, Zord. The, Example: The Mammoth Zord from uh, Ninja, Storm. Ninja Storm. Yes. Yeah. Along with, or even uh, to a l- lesser extent, the Red Guardian from Zeo. Yeah, and the mm-hmm. uh, Brachio Zord and Dino Thunder. That one fucks. I don't care what anyone else that says. One that does one's fuck. giant. I've I've yeah. seen that. I've seen that toy. It fucks. Yeah, it's a huge one. Yeah. Yeah. Even though that also did absolutely nothing. Just like fucking Titanus before him. Oh, hey, to be fair, a... Titanus does fire off a few laser blasts at the two rangers here. Yes. And I I will say with this fight, we, we not only do get um a really wicked uh scene with probably the only time uh Titanus on his own is actually on his own doing right. his own thing, um, like story relevant. Um yeah. we get um like of course the bonding between jason and tommy and we get the first time that tommy passes his shield to one of the rangers of course it being jason yeah the first ever shield trade yes and almost technically the first battleizer if you can count it no second i don't know um would would you really count count this as a battleizer yeah some people do but i don't count it but some people do like Green Ranger's shield is the first battleizer, but I don't count it. I don't think in the battleizer personally. Yeah, I'm gonna say no. A battleizer is it, it's sort of like an extra add-on. Like you, yeah, you you could you technically it, argue it, but if you, if you're gonna make an argument like over this specific shield, then you'll have to make the same argument for the White Ranger's um, yeah, very shield. True. Yeah, it's yeah, like, it's like an added it, armor, is what we're saying. Yeah, it, it, it's like it. Oh, I got it. it. It's like mystic armor. Mystic armor. It's like the, that's basically the. It, it, it's dumb. It's dumb. Are you talking about metallic armor in season three? Yeah, no, that's dumb. That's oh, the technical first yeah. battle. Eyes. That's real dumb. Yeah, and mm-hmm. when you see the metallic armor in season three, you're gonna shit a break on how shit it is. No, okay, I, I can't wait. Yeah, what I will say looks dumb is Tom, is the Green Ranger without the shield looks so stupid and weird to me. It, it looks uncanny. Yeah, it looks so wrong on so many levels. I I don't know if it's because of the gold bands on the side or maybe it's because so I, I think it makes it? him look just naked, like a noble gang- ranger, gangly. Yeah, it makes him look naked. No, and no, not naked, gangly. Like gangly. it makes him look like if uh, Conan was a Power Ranger. Conan O'Brien if Conan was a Power Ranger. <laughs> Talk about Conan O'Brien. Yeah, Conan O'Brien. Just he's so 
gangly looking. Yeah. Just... <laughs> <laughs> but oh. yeah, we get the shield trade, and they they make it up to the shrine where they get the thunder slingers, and where Andy Richter retrieves them. <laughs> 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 What the fuck, dude? So they, Jason gets the Thunder Slingers, and the putties are still kicking the Rangers' asses. And they come and save the day, and they give them the Thunder Slingers. And I, I didn't get a chance to mention them before, but now that we get a chance to see them, I kind of say the design is pretty good for these bonus weapons. Yeah, too bad yeah, we never see them again. Yeah, it's a shame it's just a big, giant Jew Ranger on them, though. Yeah. You couldn't have put like a, a dinosaur sticker or something on top of them, yeah. but I guess you're using the Sentai footage, so to go. use another MST 3K quote, they just didn't care. Yeah, yeah. And uh, they also we also get the twelfth. I have a headache, which is shot exactly using the exact same shot as the fir- as the one from the last episode. Yeah, it's I feel like we're going to be seeing that a lot as we go on in this season. We cut back to the youth center and we get shirtless Tommy and Jason with a shirt on because Jason doesn't like to get his tits out. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh my God. And, oh yeah. And, and then a- after this, we get probably my, my favorite explanation for a Zord, which I, I actually think the, the line that y- you stupid son of a bitch has been torturing me with for a while, Andreas. The There's a simple explanation for that. Everybody come quick! Something's happened! No time to explain! The, the, the ghost say there's a simple explanation from that. I think it originates from this bloody moment where oh. they're like, w- w- what was that thing that was attacking us? We need to be careful of that. Oh, that's Titanus. He's yeah, a Zordon friend. Zordon actually explained what it is. Unlike Ghost He says he's a friend and that's it. Yes. Unlike Gose, who just He's a gives him who will stuff. Be helping out. Unlike Gose, who actually gives him stuff and doesn't explain anything. He's a friend, isn't an explanation, you son of a bitch. <laughs> it's an explanation. Well, there's a, well, there's a, well the chart says. <laughs> yes. Hold on a second. <laughs> What's the explanation? <laughs> He's an old friend. <laughs> <laughs> he's okay, I'm having good. a flip out. Yeah, he's flipping out. Uh, <laughs> so now, now, now we cut back. Oh, to two the... in one episode. <laughs> yeah, we cut back to the, the youth center with shirtless Tommy and Jason, and it's time for the Team Ninja finals. It's uh, it's Tommy and Jason versus the Akira Tozawa Ninja Crew, managed by Bulk. Yeah, there's no ref really. It's just a three unexplained judges off to the side. Yeah. Actually, I think skulls the ref. Oh, he's not. There's three judges on the side. Then why is he wearing a ref shirt? Does it he's skull. dressed up like a ref. Okay, real question. Who has the worst ref outfit? Skull here or Mr. T at Starcade 94? Mr. T. Starcade 94. Yeah. He's, he's I saw dressed. that outfit. I know what you're even talking about. That was awful. Yes. Yeah, he's dressed up like he's got a sleeping cap on. <laughs> Mr. T. Uh, Fucking hell. Uh, but the, speaking of bad wrestling, this is booked like a TNA match. Oh, yeah. The rules. What are the rules? They're, I don't think there are rules. I think it's just the judges are debasing the rounds on, you know, technical skill. Because, like, round one is, like, one-on-one normal fighting. And then round two is one-on-one, uh, like, q-tip fighting and then round three is like a two-on-two with the kendo sticks Mm -hmm. it's there i think the rules are there are no rules and in my head canon the two ninjas are rocky and adam from stone canyon Mm. does they do Uh... Yeah, but we'll get to them we'll get to them we'll get to them Uh, also during the during this scene uh, with the fight, they just keep randomly cutting to this one chick in the crowd who's once. wearing like a lime a lime green top with like a jacket and her dirty blonde hair. And the entire time we're like, who is this woman? And then I just clocked in on it at the end. That's that's Tommy's ex. <laughs> <laughs> OK. And it's also Skull's next victim. <laughs> yeah, that's oh, what no. I said. Skull's next <laughs> Oh no, Skull's next victim are the two ninjas that lost. No, I, I, I think, I think that they, you see, no, they struck hard, and and the what they just did is they just uh, they they faded away. 
they ninja <laughs> vanish. The, the, the match is over, and uh, then they say, oh, the judges are making their decision now. And then just like two seconds later, Ernie shows up with the trophy and gives it to Jason <laughs> and Tommy. Here you go, guys. <laughs> this is like, damn. Shoot. See when they say they made their decision now, like uh, the the announcer legit was like, "All right, so what's your decision?" And they all just went like, "Those guys." Yes. Yeah. There's a simple explanation <laughs> like... for that. <laughs> Dude, there was you didn't even have a reason to say it there. What I know. The fuck? I know. Just Malcolm. I love it. And that's oh, the end shit. of the episode. So let's, let's, move on. let's move swiftly on to the final thoughts before I have a fucking brain hemorrhage. And before Malcolm gets a brain aneurysm as well. I Malcolm think I'm already like, dead and I'm just like on my last couple breaths of air. Yes. Well, Malcolm, use one of those breaths to tell us your final thoughts on this block. I gotta say, this was a really entertaining block. <laughs> Yeah, it also helped that we were watching with Andre, and uh, he was shitting on a lot of it. Oh, yeah. Which made it even more fun. And if anybody's yeah, wondering sure. why Andre's not here, he had to go, because he had to wake up early in the morning. So, that's an explanation. Yeah, yeah there was there was the very simple explanation for that. Yes. <laughs> He's a friend. Um, I... I think my favorite out of all of these was Gung Ho because I love ninja stuff. And Titanus is cool to see, even though he is the one of the dumber Bonazords. Yeah. I, I, I have a lot of my favorites. But, um, Life's a Masquerade was really entertaining with Frankenstein the Monster. Yeah. I'm just going to ignore Spit Flower and Itsy Bitsy Spider. Shell Shock is one of the most conflicted monsters for me because Traffic Light, dumb. Cannon Head was really cool. Yeah. If you take away the Traffic and, Light, he would be great. Honestly. <laughs> well, no, if you took away the Traffic Light, he would just be Blastoise before Blastoise was Blastoise. Be Toka Blastoise. <laughs> Toka Blast. Mecha Blastoise. Uh, my thoughts for this episode, this batch of episodes, uh, m more of the same. Very entertaining, very fun. Uh, my personal favorite of the block was Life's a Masquerade. It, it, there's something really entertaining about a Halloween themed episode, and it's just <laughs> the costumes were entertaining, and uh, Frank and Weiner was was a hit, mm -hmm. and yeah, it was it was very fun, very fun to recount as well. Everything else was also like pretty good. I'd probably say that the weakest episode in this batch was the Spit Flower. Like it was a retreadable to ground, and uh, it like the the plot, the parade float plot was okay. But it's like this is the first time I really didn't feel like they were doing something new. Overall, a great return to form, and uh, honestly, was a lot of fun. Yeah, I like the trouble with Shell Shock. Like to me, he's a classic uh, monster. Except even with the traffic light, because. How do you not remember him with the traffic light? Life's a Masquerade was a really great episode. So was Gung Ho. The weakest ones were like the Itsy Bitsy Spider and Spit Flower for me. But other mm -hmm. than that, it was a great block of episodes to watch. Yeah. There's definitely been worse. Oh yeah, definitely been worse. So was that. We end the podcast with those episodes and see you next time. And Malcolm, do you want to say goodbye? Like usual. I love y'all, we all love y'all, and may the power protect you. <laughs>